And here we are. Welcome to another episode of Legend of the Drowned Isles. Uh, homebrew 5th ed D&D game, uh, which is my fault if it's bad, uh, my player's fault if it's good. How about that? Uh, built in a homebrew world uh, called Omesha, uh, a world spawned out of my random brain. I've had too much coffee today, which is very interesting. I marked the encaffeinated one. I'm the, <laughs> Literally. I'm the host uh, for this particular session and for this game. Uh, around the table, I have my players. Let's let's hear from them. Hi, I'm Jody. I'm going to be playing Clark today. He's the half orc fighting rogue, and uh, in full swing. Uh, hi, I'm Marie. I play Alzara, the uh, half elf. Or er, she's a full elf. I've I've been playing different characters this week. Uh, <laughs> She's having uh, an identity crisis at the moment. But. Yeah, yeah, the the wood elf druid who is probably going to be very emotional here in a minute. Uh, my name is Pat. I'm playing Kujima, also known as Ironbound, the uh, tiny little kobold ranger bard rogue version. Wow, wow. My character feels so basic by comparison. Hi, I'm Nagy. I'm <laughs> playing Zacchaeus, half elf wizard. <laughs> Uh, and uh, hello to the Computer King. I ran across him in a, in a stream last night. Apparently he's followed my stream this morning. So I am not ironically over-caffeinated. I am accidentally over-caffeinated. Um, I've been restricting my caffeine lately so I can get a better lift when it happens. Apparently it's working really well. <laughs> All right. Shall we get started? In the previous session, owns which is O-V-V-N-S. Uh, uh, Pat, can you please expand that acronym? Because I can never really... It's the order of... I don't have it now that I'm not playing Amber. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, so it's a whole bunch of Latin it. words that... Uh, I think Ordo has. Veritas is in there at some point. Uh, it's actually not Ordo, but yeah, there's Ver uh, Veritas and a bunch of other words. Uh, <laughs> Owns is a collective name anyway for the group. Yeah, Although, the... I don't think that... Uh, Kuzima ever signed the uh, the article, so no. technically he's a freelance. I've only just met them. That's true. Yeah. Well, anyway, the group found themselves hiding in the Temple of Namazidi in the shadow, having helped Spe Speaker Orda put stone barriers in place as Solthog the Beholder, although he's known as Solthog the Collector, I believe he called himself, Master... The Opportunist. Hmm? The, opportunist. the Opportunist, thank you. I forget my own PCs. Uh, good start. Good start. Getting all of my NPCs. He is also the master of the herd of Soros Sworn, which you'd cut through the day before. He descended from the sky and attempted to enlist the group to help him find the seed of Yggdrasil, suggesting that he'd already negotiated with High Priestess Aina, who was, of course, uh, self sacrificed to destroy the Soros Sworn. He is rebuffed both audibly and with sharp needles towards his eye and left, chuckling, apparently not bothered too much by it. The group retreated further into the temple to recover from the battle, Elzara in particular taking time to study the amber tree statue with a walnut seed center and discovering a ritual engraved on the walnut seed itself that involved burying the seed and invoking it when an enemy approaches. Orda, that is Speaker Order of the temple, attempted to tell the story of the wall of Namazdi in this temple, which told of the foundation and corruption of the forest now known as Festering. With a strange female figure at the center of the forest struck from above by a streak and growing more obscure as the panels go on. After resting, the group decided to set out for the grove. Martin and Agatha chose to stay behind at the temple, but told them to watch for three upright stones as the marker that they are near the grove. After traveling for a time, however, they discovered that festering had apparently grown further over the bank of Greybrook, almost obscuring the stones. So the group tried a direct approach, hacking and burning away at the thick, thorny vines and gnarled, interwoven trees of festering before them, but were confronted by three dryads, a thick-skinned, distrustful one that they found out was named Terris, a lithe one who seemed to glide from vine to tree branches as if they grew beneath them, named Floris, and a third one who remained hidden whose name they did not hear at the time, but since then I will actually say that has been introduced as Radix. The Dryads seemed to judge them, in particular questioning why, questioning why Clark, whom they refer to as a Reaper, is there. After convincing them of their sincerity, the Dryads opened up a pathway through the thick forest toward a hill, and then led them through an opening in the stone 
to a large underground garden, the heart of the grove. Within the grove, light danced around the room, reflected and refracted by crystals in the walls and ceiling, illuminating a large collection of thornberry vines, ripe with fruit. And as a reminder, the only fruit and non-festering vines that have been seen in this entire realm of shadow. Uh, from within the vineyard trundled a halfling, Bernard Cotton. He seemed amused to have visitors and welcomed them in. The dryads clustered around him protectively and lovingly. And I have a note here, not unlike cats, actually. <laughs> After a moment of vague familiarity, Elzera decided to look closer at the grove. Floris led her toward the center, where, in the, uh, in the middle of the light, and bound and wrapped in thornberry vines, she saw in a familiar shape she did not expect to see, the intertwined metal ring of her lost fiancé, the twin to her own. Which, in fact, you actually have the ring as a, as a prop yes. to show people. So, this is actually a ring from a local artist. Uh, it's twigs from the St. John River. There so. you go. So, as we open, um, why don't we begin... Why don't we begin with the rest of you? <laughs> gathered in the central area. Um, I've wandered off. As usual, uh, no, Zara has, has decided to take a closer look at the trees and plants. Understandable, especially given that there has been so little in the days since you traveled in the shadow. Uh, there before you are two of the dryads, one standing behind Terrace with the thick, almost bark-like skin with crossed arms kind of watching all of you suspiciously. You find she lingers a little bit longer on Clark than the rest. Uh, the other one... Uh, more or less curled up on the side of this crude stone chair in which Bernard Cotton looks uh, rather amused to see you all. He's offered you some berries and uh, will make some tea later on. But he sits around looking at you. So, are you new to the shadow then? Relatively, I, I believe. Well, that's good. I see that all of you seem to be more or less intact. That looks rather painful, and he kind of looks at the, the uh, actually I think it's on your left hand side, right hand side? Right hand side. Right hand side, yeah. where your skin has kind of mottled and now dulled from the, the, the painful initial stages of the scar that grew across your face, although your eye still remains somewhat uh, whitened from where it was. I hope that doesn't hurt too much. There's not much I can really do for scars here. It's a shame. I wish I could do more. If we were to leave this place, do the stars disappear? Leave the grove? I don't know. I've never left the grove myself. Not the grove, the shadow. The shadow? Well, I don't know if anyone's ever left. I've heard stories. I've heard a lot of hopes and a lot of dreams and some strange ideas and schemes and things, but I don't know that anyone's ever left. But then I don't really know much of what happens outside the grove. Once I found this place... It made much more sense to stay here. But if you were to leave, who knows? If such a thing could happen, such a wonder could be, maybe. I guess we'll have to see. So who are you then? Uh, there haven't really been introductions so far, but I assume that if uh, these friends of mine trust you enough to let you in my presence, they don't feel you're a harm to me, which is okay by me. I'm Zachis. I come from the Great Library of Vatur. Oh, well, I've you. heard of Vatur. i heard of a library, but I've, I'm not much for books. That's what okay. do you do there? Uh, it's been a long story. I, start, I started off cataloging, then got sent on an adventure, and I'll, like, recount everything in great detail. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to nod, but... Do you get the sense that he's not really understanding part of most of what you're saying? Uh, every once in a while, there's a there's a sort of hmm. Uh, long story short, uh, I got sent on an adventure, and I've been adventuring ever since. And then we ended up here. Well, there was a tree, some some kind of grove. Elsa would know where. Where is she anyway? Oh, I I think she's off wandering through the rest of the grove. It's it's beautiful. Yes, it is, compared I to... I do say so myself. It spent a lot of time working on it. Oh, well, we're glad you did. It's much more beautiful, as you say, than the rest of this hellhole. 
from what I remember seeing, I didn't stay much out there where it seemed a lot more dangerous. That's because it is. Mm. Anyway, we fell through a hole and we appeared in a hole in the sky and fell on a pile of bones in the shadows. Oh my, that sounds terrible. It was. I nearly died. Oh, but you didn't? No. Well, that's good. Most people, when they come here, tell me of their, well, of their end, really. I've heard a lot of terrible stories about people, but you're the first who seem to have fallen through a hole that I can recall. Yes, I, that, that is something I've observed. Everybody here, aside from us, I believe, came here through dying. Like the people we were traveling with, hmm. a dwarf and a human, they both died thousands of years before I was alive. To be honest, I don't remember much of how I came to be here. I seem to recall falling asleep and just sort of waking up one day in this strange place. Dear me, it didn't feel very good at the time, but I made kind of a home for myself, and they help. And he kind of reaches over and, and uh, almost in a way, almost like a cat, uh, pats the, 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 the head of, of Radix, who kind of leans into it. Uh, she's still kind of curled up on the edge of his chair. And again, behind is, is Terrace, uh, who kind of looks over. And the Reaper, where did you come from? He means you. I'm not from here. My name is Clark. No one's from here, except maybe us. Clark, is it? Yeah. And uh, you can see there's sort of a look from Bernard as he's sitting on the chair, as he kind of looks and a little bit exasperated in some ways uh, with this 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 brutish uh, 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 accosting of you as all of a sudden. So you are with Mr. Zack is here then? Yeah. And you came through the same hole? Yes. Apparently. How did you come to have that thing? And Terrace is pointing specifically at the at the rather large shadowy weapon you carry. It was given to me. Mm-hmm. By whom? Taken from Knowles. She looks rather confused at this. I'll hold up the necklace. <laughs> uh, they were going kind to use of, it on us. Oh, oh that's, that's gruesome, that is. It's strange. Very strange. Uh, Terrace kind of huffs and then turns and walks off somewhere. Put the, put the jawbones away. And you, little one, turning to Kuzaima, how did you come to be here? With them, I'm assuming, but I haven't seen too many of your kind here. Um, okay, first of all, is her character out of sight? Yes. Then so am I. I'm oh. keeping an eye on her. Okay. So you're... A very subtle one. <laughs> Then Where'd the little one go? Uh, <laughs> kind of turns to address the little one, finds the little I one. I'm in my there. natural terrain. Um, he does that. What a scamp! He's not. At least I don't think he's going to be stealing anything. Well, I hope not. But if he wants some berries, he's free to have some. They okay. grow in plentiful, uh, plentifully here. This is all I was. I just hope he doesn't get himself hurt. The thorns from the thorn berries can be somewhat dangerous to people. I will keep that in mind if I go to pick some. But I'm assuming there is there there are already some that were picked. Oh yes, I harvest them daily, as much as I can tell what day is. Maybe it's monthly. I'm not really sure. Yes, this uh, lack of passage of time in this realm is quite frustrating. Indeed, I may attain a certain sense of time with the light, but it's hard to say. I spend most of my life underground anyway, so it really doesn't matter too much. I sleep when I'm tired. I wake when I'm not. And most of my days at the library, that's sometimes how things work. <laughs> Shall we find our other friends? And with that, we'll transition to the heart of the grove, where, Kuzaima, you've been uh, moving closer. Am I getting it right this time, Kuzaima? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm yep. so subconscious with that one. Uh, you've been kind of uh, slinking along. It's not hard to find the, the heart of the grove. It is... A little bit of a maze, and you, you get a sense that it's not straight lines, more of curved, mm -hmm. almost spiral-like uh, nature. Oh, yeah. In here, I've got a plus 10 perception. So. There you go. Um, this, is my, this is my chosen terrain uh, underground. There you go. Uh, although the underground usually doesn't involve this many uh, bright red berries on, on, thorn, on uh, thorny vines. That's no, unusual. mostly it's mushrooms. Do you have a, a nature trained or a nature mm -hmm. skill? Oh, yeah. Uh, what's your bonus? Uh, right now, it would be plus 10. Okay. Um, these do seem to be very, very well tended. Um, you can see that some of the vines have been used to kind of tie the rest up on, on pieces of wood. 
that have been carefully placed into the ground itself. Uh, very even rows, and you can even sense where the the berries have already been picked. Um, there's a certain lack of berries in certain spaces. But even as you're watching, you can see that new berries are growing in, uh, almost visibly growing in. Although there's still it's still a slow process, but it is happening faster than you would have expected. I'll eat one of them while I uh, continue to check on her. Okay. I think it's been long enough since you last ate one that it's not going to have any any awful effects. But you do feel quite calm and at peace with the situation at the moment. Oh, good. They're not poisonous. Uh, well, I mean, there are poisons of a certain kind. Uh, the glow from the center of the grove is not hard to find. And as you come around, you can see, uh, first of all, Elzera standing before this, this glow, somewhat obscuring it from behind. Uh, and Floris, not far away, kind of looking apprehensively. I have a 31 stealth check to not uh, interrupt what she's doing. Neither one will have any idea that you are there. <laughs> You're pretty sure of it. And possibly from and just... <laughs> probably the only person who can hide from me. <laughs> and, and possibly from diverted attention at the moment, as, as both Elzara seems to be paying attention to whatever's on the other side of her that seems to glow. And Floris is watching her. That's one thing you notice right away, watching for her reaction, looking a little apprehensive as if she feels maybe she did something wrong. But before you, you see something that you have not seen for quite some time. Something which reminds you of good times and of loss. Something that was supposed to be in my cabin. <laughs> Among other things. Um, I'm going to walk up to it. Okay. Mm. And you can see that it itself is not glowing, but there's a nimbus of white around it. Bright enough that it's actually hurting your eyes a little bit. Um, but also you can see how it's behind it. There is uh, crystals which are collecting and diverting the light, spreading it throughout the entire cavern. This is the source of all the light in the center of the grove. And the, the, the vines seem to have grown up and sort of twisted within, almost as though they are, they are uh, grown up in it uh, so. and uh, holding it in place. How long has this been here? As long as the grove has been here, of course. It's what creates the growth. It's what holds it in place. Festering can't spread over the grove while this is here. Although it tries. So festering isn't part of the grove? It's different than that. Festering is the only source of life here. But this part, this part is different. It's changed by his presence and by its. What does it mean to you? It was someone very important. You know Bernard. No, He's Bernard. very special to me. Him. I point out the ring. That's. She looks at the ring and looks at you. I'm holding mine. That's not a person. It's a... It's a ring. Yes, but the owner of the ring. It's Bernard. It's his ring. Do I... F with my ring, if I remember correctly, the magic in it is sensing the other ring. Mm -hmm. If the other ring is in danger. Do I feel like it is definitely the pair? There's no mistaking that feeling, but something's strange. You feel it, mm -hmm. both here and far. Interesting. I don't know what is going on, but that is definitely the pair to this ring. May I see it? She kind of extends her hand, and a little vine kind of grows up and picks the, 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 the ring itself up, not using actually her fingers at all, as you kind of notice that she still seems to float in a collection of vines and trees that seem to grow up wherever she happens to be. Uh, the little vine, as it grows through, a little, little flower appears on the other side, kind of holding the ring. And she holds it up, 
kind of holds it and turns it a bit so it sits the same way as the ring up there. And you see your ring start to glow in a similar nimbus of color and light as what's there. Ooh. It's very pretty. It is. But what does this mean? I don't know. And she kind of brings it back down. The, the flower gently folds inward, kind of holding the ring there for you to take it back. I, and I do. <laughs> because it's... Bernard is not the person who should be in possession of that. Oh. Why not? Because that ring's ring belongs to someone named Riarda. And I forget his last name off the top of my head because I haven't written it in a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. As the GM goes, you sure put that down. Um, Smith. Smith, <laughs> yeah. Totally. Uh, um. Call him Weeby for short. I do. <laughs> um, notes, notes, notes. Description. It's in my long sheet, not... I didn't put all of that in there. Anyway. I feel like it started with an N, but... Uh, Anywho. I will have it in a moment. Elzara says his full name. Um, she kind of cocks her head uh, in a sort of curious... Uh, uh, curious expression. I don't know if I ever had the right, the right name because I realize it's not in my notes either. Oh, look at that. I have it somewhere and I'll find it when I get home. I don't understand. It seems like it's his ring. It reacts to him. But he's not who you think he is. No. So where's the person that you think owns the ring? I don't know. He died 12 years ago. 13 years ago now. Forgot that the years changed. <laughs> mm. And I would imagine that actually in some ways you, you kind of catch yourself as realizing an entire year has passed since you came out of your, your self-imposed exile. Yeah. Uh, started to engage with the world again. And, and then a few months ago started to hear his voice. I've been hearing him since... And Thornberries were his favorite. I don't know what's going on. Oh, uh, well, if you've been hearing him, that's good, isn't it? She looked kind of joyous about this. Her, her emotions tend to swing pretty quickly. Uh, Kujima will just slowly enter your vision so he doesn't startle you. Uh, just, well, kind of from down here. But uh, I'm like... This far from a tree. <laughs> um, your loved one, could he have been reborn? Ooh, that sounds exciting. It's happened to me many times. At least I think it has. I don't really remember. Some of my people believe that when someone leaves, they come back in the next one born. Not all people believe that, but we know that people get reborn down here in some strange way. Could he be here? He could be here. And I know, I know of magics that could make someone be reborn as something else. But I know for a fact that those magics were not performed within the t that time period. Hmm. One of the other things that occurs to you is the first time you heard the name Bernard Cotton was back in uh, in the uh, uh, Padwich Glen, mm -hmm. or rather underneath Padwich Glen, uh, which the uh, Para had said that her chief assistant had gone missing. Yeah. Which means he'd been around for a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Before even coming here. Yeah, and. The, Bernard was alive at the same time as Riordan. Mm. Perhaps... Perhaps there's a connection. 
not uh, reverse, but some other link between the two? Possibly. I don't know. Even bringing back the ring and kind of hanging it back, I presume, around your neck again, you still notice a little bit of wearing it. You do still notice a little bit of that that nimbus of energy is still reflected in the ring itself. Interesting. Time here is funny, so they tell me. I've never really known any place but this, although my Mm. sisters might have. But 12 or 13 years. I don't know how long that is here. It should be a very short period of time, I think. The others we have met died long ago, but didn't seem to have lived that long here. Or maybe, no, sorry, the other way around. Yeah, Pat was confused. Um, (laughs) Sorry, ignore that. Um, What do you need us to do? I don't know. You need to talk to Bernard. Probably. It is his ring. I I ignore that. (laughs) (laughs) It's not. (laughs) Um, It's probably the best idea right now. And I look at the thornberries over there. This is too much coincidence. They're vibrant and strong, ready to be picked at any moment. In fact, Floris kind of extends out a little branch that wraps gently around one of the berries and just sort of pulls it off and eats it. Um, The glow that was here, was that just from the ring, or is there a glow in the tree that the ring happened to be in? It looks as though... If you look up at it, you can see, and it's a little hard to see, and you're finding your, your eyes, which mm-hmm. are naturally just the darkness, getting a little bit of a sting from it. But as you kind of make out and squint a little bit, you can see this glow emanating directly from around the ring itself, not the trees. But the okay. glow is so bright and then bounced and, ex- and accelerated around the room that it seems to light everything from here. Interesting ring. I... It's the heart of the growth, says Floris proudly. I'm going to unattune the doll okay. and spend the next hour trying to focus on attuning the ring. Okay. Are you just going to sit right down where you are right now? No, but like that is the the intention because you don't have to like literally sit there like... Okay. But that is what's going on in the Make back. Make a wisdom of saving throw. I don't have that ring. Uh, that is a 21. Okay. As you focus on the doll and start the process of, of disassociating it yourself from it, um, kind of walling off that part of yourself which has maintained this connection, there's a, a little bit of a sharp spike of pain as it tries to hold on to the attunement from the other side. And you can actually feel it wriggling a little bit on your hip. But Creaky. you push through that, close off your mind to it, think on the ring. And it fades away, and the doll ceases to move. This all happens in an instant, just as you make that decision to do this. Um, but there's, yeah, some strange reaction you've never experienced before. I've been attuned this doll before. That was weird. <laughs> um, and yeah, okay. I'm going to do that. So you're going to focus on the ring now. Are you going to stay here, or? Um, I'm going to stay here for a moment for that time and then go and see okay. Bernard after an um, hour. Floris is kind of looking at you, but since you're not really doing all that much, she proceeds to start pulling more and more berries, gathering up in a, a woven uh, basket that seems to appear on her side, just from the, the vines and things she, she kind of crafts it. Uh, you'd recognize this as a certain extended use of druid craft from what you would do. Um, but she seems to make no effort, and not even notice that it's happening until she puts the berries into the basket themselves. What is Kuzaima doing? Is as you see, uh, Floris kind of moving around, starting to gather berries, and it looks like Elzara is deep in thought, holding on to the ring on her, in her hands. Um, he will uh, sit down and start uh, humming and beating out a uh, 
drum uh, beat to it that's very quiet, but to help her focus. Okay. Okay. Um, what kind of, are you looking for a, a heartbeat type thing, or are you looking for just a... Probably something like that, all yeah. Rhythm? Okay. All right. Meanwhile, back in the main area, um, Bernard has been kind of prompting you for stories of the world, and seems genuinely amazed as you start to talk about the different things you've seen, and there's a lot of there's a lot of reactions like, oh my, oh, that sounds terrible, or that sounds exciting. Um, just kind of gathering the stories a little bit, um, not otherwise talking that much. Uh, at one point, you hear the shrill sound of a kettle boiling, and he excuses himself and wanders off to another part over there. You can see that he kind of uh, there, there is a, one of these crystals that has been gathering light. It's actually got a slightly red glow to it, and a pot is on top. Um, and he, he proceeds to pour out some tea. Uh, Terrace continues to stand there, almost like she's rooted in a spot, looking at the two of you with not a lot of trust. Um, Radix uh, kind of leaves the, the side where she's been sort of crawling there and proceeds to go back out through the tunnel entrance, uh, probably back out into the extra area there. Uh, Terrace, we aren't going to hurt him. No, you're not. She seems very determined about this. We're not going to attempt to try to hurt him. You'd better not. I don't trust the Reaper, but he doesn't seem to be here for him. No, and he's not the Reaper. He's just Clark. We picked up this glaive. He's carrying the Reaper's weapon. What do you I've th- seen those before. Really? How many are there? Are not they many. Frequent in the shadow? No. Not for a long time. Hmm. Not since... Well... Before I was born again. And when were you born again? It's been a while. And when did your previous life end? And as I'm discussing with Terrace, uh, the three corrupted dryads that were in the trap we fell through, Mm -hmm. did they have the same characteristics as these three little ones? As you think back on them, you didn't see a lot of them particularly because they were interwoven with the, the trap and the gate itself. One had flowers, the same ones that flores, that, that, that a florist has. But as you start to piece these things together, yes, they do seem to be the three. And the voices are similar. Um, wearier where, where they were around the gate, but they have this distinct sort of nature to them that's very similar. <coughs> I was reborn before Bernard came. And what happened the first time, if I may ask, in your previous life? The dragons threatened Festering, and I guarded Festering. It is what I was born to do. Okay. But I've found another way. Which is? Bernard. It does sound like a much better way. It is (coughs) calling to me. It reminds me of (coughs) memories I don't have. Of better times. Were you ever a part of the world that's not the shadow? I don't know. <coughs> it's a coffee bit. <laughs> it's fair. <coughs> it's fair. <coughs> Bernard comes over with a cup of tea. <coughs> Here. Yes. Have, have a bit of this. <laughs> <laughs> the player would gladly, would gladly take it right now. <laughs> <laughs> As he offers both of you a, a steaming mug of uh, made out of, of stone, it looks like. Clark will pass. Oh, are you sure? I am, but thank you. Uh, make an insight check. Sure. Do you? Uh, no. Four. Okay. He just sort of smiles. Well, I'll put it here in case you change your mind. It's very good. I'll, distri- I'll uh, describe in more detail the trap we fell through and mention that there were three corrupted dryads in this trap. Similar There's to... A, make an insight check as you say corrupted dry- dryads. Six. Eleven? Eleven. Um, there's a, a little stiffness that appears in Terrace when she sort of hears the term corrupted dryad. Um, just to, You're not quite sure, but she reacted a little negatively to the mm-hmm. characterization. I'm not sure if corrupted is the correct word. Alzara would know the proper way to say it, but they were put there and most likely driven to insanity, and they seemed to have been destroyed as we fell through. And 
Does that ring a bell at all? There's a, an increasing and much more obvious sense of her rising in anger, but it doesn't seem to be anger towards you. It's sort of she's staring off into the middle distance and just sort of imagining this and just uh, involuntarily kind of whips out both arms and you see large thorns spin out towards the, the rock and embed in the rock. My kind, our kind... We have been servants and slaves. We have been guardians and protectors. There have been those who have forced us to do things that we did not wish to do. But when we are reborn, we have another chance to do something different. And there's a, an increasing sense of still like that boiling anger just below the surface. They were our sisters. Do you remember them? Do you remember who did, who put them there? No, but we have many sisters. Not all of whom still, not all of whom still live here, I think. Not all of whom still live, and not all of whom have found, and she looks on Bernard, who's just sipping his tea, not really paying much attention, it seems. Uh, not all who have found salvation. I was not, I did not make that comment to make you angry, and I was not implying that it was your kind's fault that we are here. I was just wondering if maybe there's a connection between three dryads in the trap, three dryad, three dryads here, and... We are sisters. And often when we were reborn, we were reborn together. But... Can I make sense of anything at all, or...? Uh, what sense are you looking to make? To see if there's any connection between, like, those dryads and the ones we found in the trap. Um... Make a nature check. There's 13 plus 6, because I read books about nature. <laughs> so 19. In the, the small amount of dealings you've had with dryads, uh, you met one before specifically, uh, uh, who was the dryad of a particular grove in that case. Um, they are as much nature as trees are in many ways. Okay. Uh, and just as trees are often uh, grown from a seed and grow to be much like the tree they were, that the seed fell from, you kind of get the feeling that dryads also come and, and come into existence as almost a pattern replacing the one that was there originally. Mm -hmm. So when she says they are sisters, not just referring to the three of them here, but referring to the ones at the gate, that they would be effectively siblings that took a different path in life. Okay. Um, and clearly Terrace here has found a different meaning of life. She's also referred to other dryads who have not chosen this pathway. Um, so they would be definitely related, okay. but not the same entity. Gotcha. Um, I will go on patrol to see how Radix is doing. And she kind of turns abruptly and again walks out the hallway. As she goes. You're doing a good job. Claire will speak up. Okay. Your sisters dealt in prophecy. They chose us to fix this place. She kind of stops on the threshold of the exit and pauses, looks back at you. And there's a wound there that you didn't really notice before. Not a physical wound, but she just looks as though she's having a hard time dealing with the emotions of the moment. Uh, and she's raw at the moment. And... Uh, you actually recognize something you did probably not expect to see here in her. Mm -hmm. Battle fury that you have seen in the battlefield with some of the warriors you've dealt with in the past. Mm -hmm. People who just put their frenzy at the edge of their being and thus gain tremendous power but at the same time lose self-control, lose uh, uh, em emotional control in some ways. And you see that in her there. Um, and sort of biting through her response. Like um, a few steps back. <laughs> may they have chosen correctly and being found the hope that we've all missed. And she turns quickly and runs at this point. If it makes you lost. feel better, he didn't have the Reaper thing when he came through here. Did you catch that? Anyway. I'm not really sure as the, the sound echoes through the hallway. Well, Bernard kind of looks a little awkwardly at the two of you. So, you've had quite an adventure, then. Yeah, mm. several. 
You're here to fix the shadow. Apparently. Oh, well, that seems rather ambitious. Maybe if, if we have to fix it before we can leave, then we will fix it. Okay. You think Alpha's hunt's pretty ambitious? That's what we do. Ambition. I mean, <laughs> ambition. Well, I bid you the best of luck. Thank you. There have been a lot Delicious. of people that I've met over the years who said similar things, but I don't think most of them really understood what they were doing. They probably weren't sent here. Do you remember uh, one named Emerald Amakir by any chance? Emerald Amakir. And I'll give him a description. Oh, I think I've seen that fellow once. Really? How long ago? And how did he leave? I don't know how long it would be. Quite some time ago. He insisted on going deeper into Thastrin. He asked all kinds of questions about the berries. I answered what I could. Mm -hmm. Which types of questions? Oh, well, where they came from, and how they grow, and what they do. I answered as best as I can, but I'm afraid that while I know my gardening, I'm not entirely sure why some things work. The things just sort of grow for me here. Did he think they could have magical properties, or do you, did he say why he went deeper into the mustering? Oh, I'm not exactly sure why. He didn't really tell me a lot of what he wanted, but we had many long conversations about what I knew about the festering, which isn't really all that much. Uh, my friends here know more than me. I don't go in if I can avoid it, although occasionally you'll need to find some extra bits of wood to replenish a few things. Mm -hmm. And the Dryads usually go and fetch, fetch those for me. But he did leave the shadow, and he did survive the festering. Oh, well, good for him. I'm so happy to hear that. So if he's done it, surely we can do. Make um, make an insight check. Mm. Hey, 90 plus sure you can make one so as well. 24. 24, okay. Four. <laughs> okay, you're, you're kind of hearing him, and he's just sort of talking of this. on the, on a the lot surface. And doesn't seem to really, uh, you know talk too much depth about that. <laughs> the thing you kind of realize as you're talking to him is it's almost like something's missing. Um, he's telling you about a few things, but doesn't seem to know a lot about what's going on, doesn't seem to really realize. It, it's like you're talking to someone who's only slightly there. He knows about the grove, and he knows that it responds to him, and he knows to to bring in water, and he talks about having to, to siphon the water from Greybrook, um, but doesn't really understand most of what's going on. Mm. Yeah. Is it like, if he's missing something, is that like somebody like tampered with his mind possibly? Or? Possibly. Do I know of any spells that can do that? Do you know of any spells that can do that? Do you have any of those spells yet? I don't think so. You Not certainly know it. that that uh, folks like uh, uh, up in Farhaven. Um, wow, there's a name I'm going to try to drag out of the past. Uh, the Arnivars? No, no, no. The yeah. Arnivars were in. No, they were the. They were in uh, 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 the tour. The Ottenvars, Thank you. Uh, that the matriarch there was very concerned about mind magic and the alteration of minds. Yeah. Um, she was very much against it. So you do know that mind, that magic probably exists of that caliber, if you don't know it yet. Small suggestions and changes can be made um, on an instant, but they fare, they fade pretty quickly. Yeah, and the recipient of the spell knows that it's been done. <laughs> right. And you also experience Buddy in a coin. Yeah. Right, memories were like removed from him. Oh, yes. Yeah, memories yes. of the shadow, actually. But memories were blocked of him, okay. but yeah, but yeah. <laughs> More or less. Yeah, man, so many people from so many eras. That's 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 a good that's a good callback. Yeah. I appreciate that. All of the people and all of the the strength. <laughs> Did uh, Emerald cast happen to cast any magic on you by any chance? Um. Well, I think he cast a few things, trying to figure things out. He didn't try to harm me or anything. At least, uh, just I don't think he was harming. On you specifically, feel. on your mind. I don't know. What sort of things would I be experiencing? Nothing much, but if 
I don't know how to do it myself, but memories can be erased oh. or modified. Well, that sounds horrible. We are maybe not almost that. nothing more than our memories, aren't we? Mm -hmm. I agree. But maybe, what if something horrible happened and he blocked it from your mind so you could live a happy life? Well, or he is a pretty secretive fellow. Maybe there was a secret that he didn't want getting around, and he could have removed it. Of course, this is all pure speculation. I don't know if I would know that. Hmm. I would like to know why he went into the festering, and hopefully we won't have to do the same. Oh, well. He was looking for something. That's what he did say. There is a pathway. But he, he didn't say what he was looking for. Would it have been the heart of the forest? I don't know. Maybe. What's the heart of the forest? Uh, no, question to the, to the DM. That's what he called it, right? Um, I mean, that's what uh, the speaker uh, called it. The, yeah, the speaker called it that. I believe also Salfug referred to it that way, too. Uh, but certainly on the on the memories of it that uh, the speaker told you that was the, the heart of the forest. Okay. That feminine figure at the center of the forest. Question. Mm -hmm. uh, does this guy have like a mantle or something where he puts trinkets and stuff? Yeah, there's a couple of, of, uh, of stone shelves that have been kind of carved out a little bit. Clark would like to take a look at that stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, as you look over, most of it is, is tools that are made out of stone. Uh, you do see uh, a stone bowl and a, uh, a I forget what they called mortar and pestle. Yeah. Basically, used probably for grinding the dried leaves, to turn right. into tea. A um, few other little trinkets. Um, you see a pencil. It seems kind of out of place. It's worn down quite a bit, probably half the size it was before, and very uh, crude nub on the end. Mm -hmm. um, not much for for other things there, really. Um, what else he would put on a shelf. Um, there's a smaller version of one of those crystals just sort of sitting on its own right there on the shelf. Is there uh, something in particular you were looking yeah, for? Yeah, Clark's looking for uh, something that looks out of place, like a specific trinket of some sort, probably something about yay big that looks out of place. Okay. And if he finds such a thing, uh, he's going to try to look at it through the lid of his right eye. Make a, an investigation check. Sure. Just kind of wandering around. There's a little bit of a pantry there around the the uh, heating stone. Another four. Uh, eight. Eight. Uh, most of this seems like it was made right here. Okay. Um, there's no uh, there's no books or anything like that. There's nothing really written down, despite the pencil that's there. Okay. Um, there are a pair of of shears, like pruning shears, that are there that couldn't have been made here. There's no way they could have refined the metal that, that well. They look like they're high quality. And he'll take a look at those and then uh, if they don't bear any fruit, he'll uh, he'll kind of wave himself out and head into to the uh, clearing where the others have gone. Okay. They look to be mundane. There's okay. nothing particularly special about them other than the fact that they shouldn't be here. Do they smell funny? Uh, you're going to yeah. pick them up and take a sniff? Um, they smell thickly and sweet, uh, as if they have been exposed to a lot of thornberries. Uh, and a lot of the sap probably built up along the edge. Looks like the edge is not that sharp either. It hasn't really been very well cared for, um, but it, it looks very heavily used. Okay. Uh, Clark will look to uh, Zacchaeus, kind of, and he'll head out the door. Mm -hmm. Which way are you heading? Out. At the, out, out the tunnel out, way and, back and out. And kind of the... figure out where everyone went. Okay. Are you following uh, Radix and Terrace, or are you following in deeper into the grove? Because there's the tunnel back to the surface, and then there's deeper into the grove. Knowing Elzera, probably deeper into the grove. Okay. All right. We'll say that enough time has passed that you've actually been able to focus on this. Um, Floris... I don't know if it's an attunement item or not, but it's a thing that she's mm -hmm. <laughs> that has crossed her mind and she's doing. <laughs> Floris at this point has, has gathered quite a large basket of berries and then just simply goes off to probably deposit the berries. Um, the the drum beat continues from uh, from Kuzima. I'd probably be standing and holding it kind of near the other ones. Okay. After about an hour, you feel a bit of warmth on your hand, and you can see now that your ring is also glowing similar to this one. 
um, and a stronger sense of both the ring and two different presences. One nearby, but faint. The other one quite a distance away. And it's familiar in both cases. And there's a question, a voiced question. It comes from both in a familiar voice. Is that you? And the voice is Riordan's. Yes. Find me. The voice is faint and then fades off at the end of that. All right. So there's one that's nearby, one that's far away, both the same voice. Right. Now, Clark, you stepped out of the space. Zach, are you following Clark, or are you going to stay here? Not yet. Um, just, well, Bernard's like a druidy type, right? He's a farmer. Okay. I'll briefly explain what the murals in the Temple of Mimosity were depicting, and the heart of the forest is, well, the forest, pretty much. Okay. And He's nodding along to the explanation, and then uh, stops. What? Talks his head as if listening to something. What's going on? Do you hear that? Do I hear that? <laughs> you don't hear anything. I don't hear anything. Excuse me. And he kind of hops off of his chair and starts walking in towards the, the, uh, the, the grove. You've managed to kind of walk through and you can see the light getting stronger. Um, without that as a way to navigate, it would be very difficult to move through here. I'll follow and you can see the... <laughs> the walls of, of vines, these thorn-covered vines with the berries on them, shiver slightly and shift um, as you're walking through. Uh, make a... Hmm, let's call it an insight check. Not on the forest. <laughs> That's a ten. Ten? That's a ten. Double digits. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's on the edge of your perception, but you feel almost a shiver as if something's walked across your soul. Mm. But then you kind of react and feel, no, not your soul, but a soul was involved. And as you go a little bit further in, you can notice that the, the vines and the leaves on them are starting to shiver even more. And in the center where you are, and that voice has been heard, the light brightens on the ring that's held in the in the grove itself. And you can feel everything start to shift around you as if something is coming out of out of out of order. And Bernard has walked in there, kind of half in a daze, and did, quickly turns around the corner. Did Bernard and, and Clark walk the same way? Or? They did. Okay, I'll just, you know, follow along there. Okay. <laughs> As you turn the corner, you can see that Bernard now is running as fast as he can, seems to. And you also see the sort of shivering of these vines, catching a little bit of the light from overhead, flashing, almost as though they're sweating a little bit. Uh, and you hear Bernard running behind you and quickly running up to you and not even noticing you, just running right on by. Clark will arm himself. Okay, with the, mm -hmm. with the glaive? Okay. Th this feels bad. Do I notice anything? Um, one at a time Sorry. here. Um, <laughs> make an ins. Uh, no, let me make a nature check in your case. Nature's a weird one, but I'll, I'll go for it. Uh, that's a natural 19, so okay. 27. First of all, groves don't normally do this. It's pretty sure that they're not likely to move that. It's not normal, but normal is subjective. <laughs> but the the way you look at it is there's there's a reaction definitely from the grove around you. It is not entirely threatening. It's not threatening in that in that way. It's more like it feels threatened, and you notice as you look around that a lot of the little the little uh, thorns that were normally just sort of there to catch someone who's kind of put their hand in and hold them there like raspberries have now twisted out and are facing outward, um, kind of defensively. I'm going to whisper, it'll be okay. We'll figure this out. Okay, make a persuasion check. Two! 
<laughs> okay. Um, you don't quite believe it yourself. And unfortunately, that seems to translate in your in your voice as you can... Oh, I totally you, don't. Your voice is ever, <laughs> ever so, you know, we will figure this out. Um, and the light in front of you dims slightly. Um, as you hear uh, now, not making any attempt to, to hide at all, the, the rapid footfalls of uh, a short halfling uh, who's running by you at the moment. Mm -hmm. I uh, get my uh, uh, blowgun ready just in case. Okay. Other than that, I just sit there watching and drumming and humming. Okay. It feels threatened. And you hear from behind you uh, Bernard's voice. Not the usual calm you've come to expect. What, what's, gone, what's gone wrong? What's I, happening? I would have my hand with the ring on the tree. Uh, and you can see him kind of run up and, and kind of... Almost out of nowhere, there are stairs that look like they were just part of the, the vines themselves as it kind of bounds up on those. And you can see him reaching out and looking at your hand, and he looks very confused. Who, who are you? My name is Elzara Moonshadow. I'm a Kier. Who are you? My, my name is... Oh, dear. I don't know. Who am I? And he looks at you with confusion. Um, you hear from the vines on the sides something that startles you a bit, actually, as you're kind of ready, as you see uh, emerging out of the vines as if walking through them uh, the form of Terrace uh, with her arms up. Spikes are, are pointed outward, and she looks ready to fight as she emerges into the space. What's going on? What have you done to him? And she stop, stops towards uh, El Zero. This ring yeah. belonged to someone that I cared about, but apparently belongs to you. It's it's my ring. It's mine. I, I've always had it. Always? Does the name Riordan ring a bell? No, make, it, make an insight check. Yeah, one. Um, he turns away from you and kind of looks at the ring. Um, there's no way to tell. He turned away from you at that moment. Who, who are we? I remember. I have a brother. Milo. Yeah. That's all he says for a moment or two. Meanwhile, behind you, uh, you can easily hear, because he's, again, not making any attempt to hide it, uh, is Terex kind of storming up towards you very quickly. Um, you can see uh, Terex is, is bound for war and reaching out for Elzera. You hear another rustling as from the other side Less of a of a exposure, in fact, not really fully exposed, but you can kind of make out the sense of of uh, uh, something else moving, um, perhaps Radix, staying again as she was before within the the wall of vines. You come around the corner and see them standing like that. Uh, just as the one that's reaching towards her, such as a, don't interfere. Um, make a intimidation or persuasion. That's up to you. If you had a plan, oh, it'll be persuasion. more persuasion. Okay. Nope. It's a six total. Six total. She seems to not really pay attention at that moment. And reaches forward and grabs Elsa's shoulder. Can I fire a shot across her bow? Okay. Just in front of her face. Just roll to make sure you don't get one. Mm -hmm. Get a twenty. Yeah, you can pretty much put it wherever you want to. Not a natural twenty. Uh, what twenty. direction are you firing it? Towards the Just the light, or right across her eyes? Okay. To catch her attention, thing. Uh uh. All right. Thing. Um, she'll still reach out for Elzera, but shaken by the moment, uh, she kind of stops a little bit short and then looks back at you. Something uh, is going on. We must find out the truth. Um, 
and from another side you see the flowers suddenly bloom and out comes Floris. And you come around the corner, you see them all there, staring and standing around this. Bernard turns to you. There's a tear in his eye. I don't understand. I, I, I know you, but I don't know you. And I don't know you, but I know you. And Terrace is just looking behind. What is this? What's going on? It feels like Riordan's soul might have been split or something. I feel it near. And now that, that he's standing right here and paying attention to you, this is definitely the other source that you were feeling, the, the fainter source. The fainter yes, of the two? the fainter of the two. I feel a faint connection to him here, but also somewhere else. That is what that this ring does. You can't have him. And Terrace moves behind uh, uh, Bernard, and th she's very protective at this moment, almost lo looming over, over him, almost ready to snatch him away. I don't want him. I want Riordan. Bernard kind of looks back at the light, and you can see his hand kind of go up to his face and remove whatever tear that was falling from that. So be it. Uh, where did you... Where did you feel... Him? He's in you. No, not, not, not just here. He said another. Very far. I believe you'll have to go into Festering. And Terex is, you're not leaving. You're not going into festering. And Bernard kind of waves her off. Not me. Them. Is this when I walk in? Yep. <laughs> Bernard. Uh, and there's a strange collection of people down at the other end. Is my ring still also glowing? Yes. Okay. It glows a little bit brighter, actually, as you notice, as him standing there. Um you have a feeling that it reacts not only to the ring, but to him, maybe to the other. Are we all hugging? Floris comes in and she just sort of moves closer to you and little vines start extending around. Terrace's little, the little thorns on the back of her neck start, start popping up her shoulder as well. Uh, but the vine kind of winds around <laughs> that and starts to embrace the three of you. Um, What's a little bit. going on? We are hugging, says Terrace. <laughs> Flora. Flores. Or Flores. Flores, pardon me. Yes, Terrace is definitely not going to say that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I just heard something about going in the festering, and it doesn't seem... Is it a good bite-parting hug? Okay. I hope it's not. From beside you in the wall, you hear Radix. It's dangerous. Yes. That's it's dangerous in there. That's what everyone says. Uh, any... Your beings of the woods, any chance you could uh, clear a path for us? And then the, you hear kind of a retreating from the, the wall is beside you. I don't know uh, what's going on, uh, but I want to figure this out. I need to figure this out. Likewise. Indeed, uh, it seems unexpected. <clears throat> Did you always have an interest in thornberries? Oh, yes. For years. Can't really remember when it started. You're sort of there one day. Hmm? Hmm? First thing I think I ever dreamed of. You know. What's going on? This is Floris, who's still in this strange sort of hugging position. Now, kind of retreating slightly, kind of noticing the awkwardness for the first time. <laughs> I wish I knew. Uh, we need to go know? into festering. For what purpose? That's all I'm going to do. 
Yeah, you can. She holds up her hand. You can see the ring that she has worn around her neck numerous times, slowly, slightly glowing. Do I know the meaning behind that ring, by the way, or has she, has she never told Zachis? I did. It, did she ever divulge what that ring was about? <laughs> mm. I don't know if there, I ever did. It's, it's, uh, Samarin knew, but I think he was the only one. Which finger that ring is sitting on might tell you. <laughs> yeah. It, it is in a traditional betrothal position, if you will, but. You've seen your mother's ring look something like yeah, that. Although it's, okay, hers, so is, hers has got more gems in it. It's a little more flashy. Did the you name just get engaged with Bernard? What? And Floris kind of leans in. You're engaged! And kind of there's a tighter, tighter... Floris, or Terrace this time, really shrugs it off and then just turns. If you will go into Festering, you will not go alone. One of us must guide you. You would never survive. That would be much appreciated. And what are we looking for? I don't know what this means. A lost loved one. Oh, oh. It would appear that, um, you've got more connection to this place than you realized. Than I realized, too. Hmm. <laughs> I'll go make some tea. And Bernard kind of moves down off of that and just sort of walking a little bit um, preoccupied at this point, clearly thinking about other things, kind of walks uh, by uh, Gazima, gives a nod, walks by Clark, gives a nod, and then starts humming a small tune. Um, you recognize the tune. It's one of those simple little farm songs that... Uh, you remember Riarden and Milo kind of going back and forth on one of those ones where one would give one line, the other would give the other line, and they'd come together on the chorus? Yeah. You've heard it many, many times. It's, as far as you know, an elven song, although he's not actually saying any lyrics at the moment. Um, Terrace walks into the wall of thorns and vanishes. Floris is still looking around. I don't understand, but if you're going into festering, it's very dangerous. Yes, uh, it can be survived, though. I've been there before. Good. That's what I like to hear. I don't remember dying, but I'm pretty sure I made it back. Do you remember? Were you paying attention to the conversation I was having with Bernard earlier about the other elf that came here some a long time ago? No. Do you remember this elf? And I'll give him the description of, of Emerald. Mm. I'll, I'll give her the description of Emerald. I remember somebody really tall. I think he was an elf. He went through to Festering, I think. Yes, that would be the one. Uh, do you remember if he did anything to Bernard's mind by any chance? Why? What did he do? I don't know. I'm trying to figure out if anything happened. Oh. It wouldn't have been anything bad. Yeah. He did cast a few spells. Do you remember the effect? He was asking questions. He was asking questions and Bernard couldn't answer. So he said he would cast a spell to clear his mind. And then he answered a few of them. Wow. And did he happen to say which spell this was? No, I didn't recognize it. Thank you for the information. Okay. And she smiles and she kind of wraps herself around you in this sort of warm hug. Okay. You know, I like there's Florence. only a couple of little little points where the, the thorns maybe not quite angled just the right way. It's just a little bit of like pins and needles occasionally. Uh, but not meant or not, doesn't seem to be meant maliciously. I there like would be Florence a nice too. little heel turn to have Floris turn uh, malicious all of a sudden. Um does the growth still feel threatened? It seems like it's relaxed. Okay. Um, it's not actively moving anymore, and you can kind of see the the thorns just sort of hanging a little bit softer and, and lighter, almost as though whatever spur of chemical energy that the plants had in them is, is now being dispersed and then regularized. They're still there, and they are very apparent. It's the nature of a thornberry bush anyway, but they don't seem to be shaking as much. Okay. Um, I am going to turn to the others and say, I need to do this. She needs to do this. 
<laughs> yeah, and I suspect we all do as well. They we all do as well. To the heart of the forest? Is that where we think, you think we have to go? I need to go wherever this tells me to go. Hopefully it's along a well-cleared path. You have the same one. That's strange. Same what, ring? She's looking yeah. at the ring, like almost not having noticed it before. Isn't she the one who dragged me to the tree mm-hmm. because of but it? But she didn't really realize that you had the same one? Yeah. She was more intent on everything else. Yeah. And it seems as though she doesn't necessarily remember things entirely. Uh, things she doesn't necessarily deem important anyway. Until now. I have brain. Kind of. Um, I think we should try to figure out what we, we do from here. Mm-hmm. And if the dryads have been to the festering before and have come back alive, they will be valuable help. Don't forget the dragons. Yeah. They're very scary. Oh, I know. We, we've seen one for six. At the they same fly time. over here all the time. We encourage the grove to grow, to hide even more. I don't know if it's working. And you remember having seen the, what appeared to be festering, growing, having grown out a lot further, even over the markers that the others had noted before. What's the relationship between the grove and festering? This is the grove, and that is festering. Yes, but is festering part of the grove, or is the grove just in festering? She kind of looks thoughtful for a moment. Yes? <laughs> we were all part of the forest. And the forest was all what we now call festering. But it wasn't always festering. So they tell me. I don't remember. I may have been gone and back many times since then. But this is the growth. And with Bernard here, it's different. She kind of smiles, just sort of thinking of Bernard, probably. Come, come, come. <laughs> um, I don't ask much of you guys ever. I much prefer just being the one taking care of you. But I need to do this. Go with you. We'll go with you. Mm-hmm. Yay! I'm so happy. And she kind of Yay, with me re- back. <laughs> reaches out a little bit, and you can see now the, the snaking vines trying to encapsulate all four of you, even though you're actually some distance apart from each other. Good knife. Are you going to try to cut it? No, just, yeah. Just what? What is this? What is this? Yeah, the way. Uh, he means no harm. He's just like uh, a very sentimental type. I always uh, mean harm. And I'll, I'll just like awkwardly do the side hug, you know? <laughs> yeah. Awkward side hug. Well... I'll get ready. And she backs into <laughs> the uh, the wall of, of thorns, leaving little flowers popping in her wake. What? Okay. So, uh, we'll... are there any books about the festering? Who would write them? Bernard? On what? I counted, Paper. I counted one pencil. Right in this pen, which nobody must figure out I have. Nobody in the shadow, I mean, not, not, not my computer. Right? So <laughs> it's just a, like, sort of weird, weird. And I have this pen that none of you should know about. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming that would fetch a nice price in the shadow. Oh, who knows? Wait a second. I'm looking at the pen and the ink. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take like a small scrap of paper and mm-hmm. write something on it. Yeah, it writes. Okay. I'll uh, check as it. you watch, the paper seems to grow and age and get a little brittle. Nothing lasts here. All right. <laughs> Don't look in the bag at the other books. You'll just cry. I'll look at them when we get back. <laughs> so there you are, gathered in the, in the heart of the grove. Are you going to stay there and plan, or what do you wish to do? I think we should plan. Yes. In the distance, you hear the uh, the shrill whistle of the kettle once more boiling. You still have your cup of tea. Yeah. 
<laughs> I just kind of imagine this coming into frame suddenly. It's like nobody knows where they came from. You still have the cup of tea. Um, You're the ultimate Englishman. You always have a cup of tea somehow. I'm going to go up to one of the thornberry bushes and eat a thornberry. Okay. Because I need it. <laughs> Especially this close to the, the, the heart. They're very fresh. And you, you pluck off a nice, uh, a nice one. It is a little bitter, as they are a little bit bitter on their own. But you feel calm. You feel the wave of calm pass through you. And as you watch, you watch the berry, another one grows in its place. That's weird. And the, the effect is not dissimilar to good berries, actually. But unlike your good berries, these don't wither and die immediately. Interesting. Very interesting. So, she's stoned. Uh, what about the rest of you? <laughs> Waiting patiently. Okay. Mm hmm. When Bernard gets back, uh... there's no indication that Bernard is coming back. <laughs> it, it he seemed like he'd left very awkwardly and literally said, "I'm going to make tea," and you heard the kettle uh, uh, whistle blow. Uh, but for the moment, you seem to be left alone. I think we should have a plan. Yes, which should include not dying too quickly. We need to know what we're looking for. Is there any way you can determine that by focusing on the ring? Or do we I'll, just... I'll try to see if focusing on the ring gives me a general direction or something. Okay. As you look on it and try to push aside the flood of emotions coming at you right now, because every time you look at it, at, for a long time it had been a, a keepsake, a memoriam, something to ground you to the memory. And now it seems to be grounding you to a possibility you hadn't even considered. But as you look upon it and kind of focus, you do feel a general pull. And it's difficult to orient yourself based on the direction you're, you have here, but it does seem to be going off, if you will, to the west, which would be the general direction. Of, of <laughs> Basically <factory>. that way. <laughs> so I'm looking yeah. that way and I'm remembering the mural the mural we saw in the Temple of Mimazani mm -hmm. and the path we took to get to the grove. Mm -hmm. Which way is that way pointing? Keep in mind. Um, yep. Yeah, keeping keeping that in mind and keeping the directions you turn, you kind of work it out in your head. That's the heart of Festra. Yes. If you haven't traveled too deeply, then Greybrook should be a few hundred meters that way, flowing across your path. So we're going to have to cross Greybrook as well. Yep. But yeah, I'll let my compatriots know everything the DM just told me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you fill them in on, on, you know, having... And this is something rather remarkable that, that's, that maybe it's because of the recent events, maybe it's because of coming to the shadow, but weirdly, Zakis has this pinpoint knowledge of where things are in space. Uh, even with no real guide, guiding guide marks, he could tell you exactly where you were. Uh, in fact, you can point and say... That should be Ember Skull. Over there, that's the uh, Wither Wither Gate. Down that way, and you kind of pinpoint that should be the Emerald Nest. And Festering is here, <laughs> <laughs> the large expanse in front of you. Yes. But if if you're looking from the way that she's holding out the ring and saying that direction, it would be dead center of, of Festering. All right. Not entirely different from the direction you saw the dragons traveling. I wonder if the dragons are also after whatever we're seeking. They were looking for something. Yep. And Salhug said he was looking for a seed, and so were the dragons. Is that what he said? Yep. Race to the seed. Yes, it's very probably best if we do go along with you. <laughs> Not just for safety, but to prevent the dragons or Selvelic from getting their hands on whatever it is. Yep. So... What's, what do you guys think we should do? Go to the thing, take the thing, kill everybody. I'm good with that. I'm also good with that, and even Terrace will be good with that, I dare say. I don't want to fight six dragons. Yes, stealth may be an asset. I'll save one for you. you can fight one. 
I don't want any of us to 1v1 a dragon. Yeah, they looked particularly scary. Uh, but can they penetrate the cover of the festering? They seem to be having trouble last time they were here. From the description you got of them before, um, the brood mother is making her nest in feather and festering somehow. At least that's always the direction people say that she goes to. Yeah. And you did see them crashing through the upper upper edges of festering, uh, and using their breath to clear themselves a pathway. It did like replenish itself it did. shortly after, though. It did. Yeah. I wonder if that's if that was the work of the dryads. That they could replenish the forest so easily. And could they make the trees part, or at least not attack us? I think that's the intent. Good. This gives me hope. And when they get what they want, they will close the gates to us. And we'll be right in the middle of it. When who gets what? Who when we get to the thing, yes. and they don't like it, we are screwed. Why wouldn't they like it? Because they're four Which? spirits. We will probably want to take it. They may not like that. Well, what if it's whatever's corrupting the forest? Hmm? I mean, we did see on the murals that something pierced the heart of the forest, and yeah, then I this happened. They might like it. The dryads are pretty comfortable right now. So what if they could be more comfortable? Uh, unlikely. No one likes change. Well, not everyone likes change. Well, we'll have to hope for the best then. Yeah. Five dragons. Hmm? Five dragons. Yes. Six. You get one. I'll take five. No dragons would be preferable, but... Anyway. What's, How's everybody what feeling? What does uh, Kazima think about the talk of dragons? Hmm? I'll do what I can to help them get out of here. Facing dragons is probably stupid, but who am I to tell them not to do stupid things? I mean, dragons are the ultimate form of a kobold. That's what the, some of the stories are told when you were a kid. Theoretically, yes. Only kobold but assholes, though. There are good dragons and bad dragons, like there are good dra kobolds and bad kobolds. Uh, I'm blue, I'm not black, so I'm not descended from these dragons. Um, hmm. I'm a family, not it, my it, problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it just he'll wait until we see any evidence of what the dragons are actually doing. Okay. If they turn out to be good guys, then it's like, hmm, we probably shouldn't do anything to them. If they're bad guys, we should probably avoid them. Okay. So he doesn't have like a blind love or, or worship of dragons, like a lot of kobolds do. Dragon no. Boy. Um. Okay. If it was a sparkling blue dragon, then possibly. <laughs> uh, but, I mean, you know, different dragons are territorial. Okay. They fight over things. The kobolds try to stay out of the way most of the time. Um, they're not the gods. They're just potentially great ancestor uh, beings. Okay. He would like to be a dragon someday. It's probably not going to happen. There are magics who can make it happen. Mm-hmm. For a short time. Someday he'll get polymorph. <laughs> so, as you're starting to assert the idea of uh, needing to go in, um, probably you would notice first you're also on guard. A little bit of rustling from the the vines in their rack beside you, and looking over, you see the familiar uh, eye of Radix staring out. There's tea. Excellent, I just finished mine. And the eye kind of closes and she vanishes from sight. I'll go over to the main area then. Okay. As you wander back out, you can actually smell the tea stronger than it had been before. It may have been an, a larger batch or something, or more intense. Maybe someone needed to calm their nerves. Um, but uh, seated on the small table that was in the center of the area, you can see the teapot and... Six uh, mugs are there. Um, actually, five mugs, because uh, Bernard already has his, kind of double-handing it and sipping very carefully. Rocking a little bit in place. Looks a little bit uh, pensive. Um, 
and when you get there, Radix is already kind of curled up beside him and actually has one of the mugs as well. Mm. But is not really drinking it so much as breathing it in, just sort of letting the aroma pass over her. And there's a there's a, a, a an, almost a look of bliss as her eyes half close and she's enjoying it. She made me. Uh, kinda, <laughs> kinda. Um, pacing by the front of the room where the opening is is Terrace. Um, and there's no sign of Floris at the moment. Um, and Bernard is kind of holding on to the cup and kind of rubbing his fingers over each other and kind of like he's trying to warm himself up or trying to like his hands have fallen asleep a little bit. Are um, you going to be all right? Oh, and he kind of looks up as if I hadn't realized you were there. Uh, Terrace's, uh, sorry, uh, Radix's eyes open slightly and narrowly and kind of looking at you but then close back down when she sees it. it's you as well. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know, I suppose. I mean, I sort of thought I was all right. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you're still your all right. No, fault. no harm will come to you here. No. Although many have tried and, and some have come awfully close. Who? There are many who would like to find the grove and take it for themselves. We've hidden as much as we can, and they help me. So far, none have made it very far. The dragons have flown overhead, but they don't seem to notice. Others seem to have a keener eye. Was the beholder the opportunist one of the creatures who knows about the grove? Uh... He seemed like the type who would and try to steal it for himself. Terrace, kind of, uh, you see her nod. I've seen that floating bastard a couple of times. Yes, we've seen him once, and if we can see him never again, that would be great. He'll be back. He'll be back with force. I know it. And we'll be ready. Did he have the Soros horn with him? How does he control him? I've seen little bits of white. He had others. I don't know how. They didn't survive. Good. And uh, Bernard gestures for you to get once again sit down. Okay. You have to leave, and you have to go. I understand this. <laughs> I don't know how. I really don't. And he looks towards Elzera, and there's almost a pleading look on his face of like, "Help me understand." He seems confused. I want to understand this as well. And try to make this better. Likewise. Yes. He drinks very deeply in his mug, and there's a little bit of a red stain around his lips as he's drinking far more deeply and probably far more fast, far more quickly than you probably should. If I may make a request, it's come to my attention that Emerald has cast a spell on you previously, a long time ago, to calm your mind and help you answer questions. I don't know if I know the exact same spell. In fact, I probably don't, but could I have permission to peer inside your mind, if it's okay with you? I will not go anywhere you don't want me to. I would just ask questions. Well, I suppose, and you can see this look as it kind of looks over, and, and Terrace is just like, no. It's not uh, polite to simply force my way in. Clearly that, that she's she's much more defensive. And uh, um, he kind of looks, um, he looks to Elzara for reassurance, actually. It's entirely up to you. As he sort of looks over and questioning. I trust him. <laughs> I've been inside her mind before and never creeped around where I should have. Clark grounds himself. <laughs> well, not his. He hates magic, and I, 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 I'm respectful of his choice. If Zara trusts you, then I do as well, and that's something you have not heard in about thirteen years. There's only one person who ever used that short form of your of your name. Everybody else calls me Ellie. Mm-hmm. Didn't seem to even notice by his standards, but you caught it. Oh, I thought it was a GM, like, screwing up words. Nope. Oh, okay. nope. <laughs> nope. Um, if, will it hurt? No. All right, then. How do we do this? Great. So I'll just begin casting. I'll explain that I'll begin casting the spell and how it's going to work, and 
I'll give him a preview of the questions I ha I'm going to ask, which is probably like the same questions I was, I was trying to ask earlier. Like, from the wall near the entrance where the vines have kind of gathered, mm -hmm. there's a bloom of flowers, and Flora steps out. Did I hear there was magic? Yes. Oh, I want to see. Okay. And she kind of flows over to to you. And she's kind of watching closely to what you're doing. Are you casting this as a ritual? I or... don't think it can be cast as a ritual. Okay. I didn't know if it was or not. It's at level two, I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. So she's watching everything that you're doing, every little uh, small gesture, every vocal component, everything you have. She seems to be very closely paying attention. And I will tell her it's like I'm going to ask. I'm going to look into his mind, but only like everything is consensual type of thing, and like what it's supposed to do. Yeah, and he's sitting there kind of calmly holding on to the cup uh, and when you say I'm going to look into his mind uh, she kind of moves over and some of the strands of vines kind of carefully arrange his hair in a very you know tender way and like you know calming way and he kind of smiles and looks up at her and... alright so okay. I'll cast a spell Clark will stay near Terrace okay she looks very upset with this yeah uh, and she's on edge absolutely um, you can see that involuntarily she's kind of flexing and the, and the spikes are twisting outward a little bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, and these look like they're pretty substantial spikes too, much like the vines themselves, almost as though she's composed of them. You cast the spell? Yeah. So those surface thoughts, what am I getting? Surface thoughts, there is confusion. Um, you get a, a sort of vision of Elzera, which is strangely muddied. It is not the vision of Elzar you see in front of you, but of one running, laughing, smiling, like a memory. But it, it doesn't seem complete. It seems to fade. Mm -hmm. um, there is a sense of duty, as in I have to get back to picking the berries. There's many that are ripe and I need to make sure they're preserved the right way so they can get across the uh, the lands. There should be some people coming in sometime soon. And, and what lands are these? Is that is that the shadow or is that like the... It seems world? to be the present mm -hmm. moment right. of shadow. Um, and it's it's it, it's kind of the re reverting to a routine where it's like, okay, here is where we need to uh, we need to uh, uh, you know get back to my routine. Okay, I've got to make sure the barriers are picked. got to make sure they're set up for preservation. got to make sure the light is, is, is flowing in the right direction. So he's running through kind of what you gather as a, like a daily routine. This is what i got We're to running do. We're running late. <laughs> uh, kind of. You know, it's got to make sure, oh, there's there's some, some new growth. I've got to make sure that's that's pruned back. So make sure everything is still in order. And there's a sense of, of holding on to the the uh, the routine that's established. Okay. For... Um, for uh, the Obrama Choco ask Elzera is a druid. Uh, someone in the chat room asked what. Oh class. yes, yes, I am a druid. Uh, although Gardener was a good close guess. Uh, I I do garden. Yeah. And she can make some. Awesome and hello, potions. person in the chat. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, so that's the circus thoughts. Okay. Kind of. There's a little bit of 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 this intrusion of this pseudo soft soft lens memory kind of thing. There's lots of lots of greasy film on the on the memory, so everything is it's kind of perfect and, and shining. Uh, this beautiful summer day, you can see the bright sun shining on the uh, on the, the the hair, which has come a little bit undone, which is very unusual for her at this moment. She must have been distracted, uh, as just sort of one of those wonderful memories. Uh, and looking down and seeing the the uh, the elven hand holding on to Elzera's hand as well, confusion, and that kind of gets pushed aside for the, no, I have to make sure that I do these things. This is the thing that gives people hope. This is the thing that brings brings happiness. This is the thing that brings contentment to getting back to his routine. So that's the surface. Okay. What are you probing for next? Probably more about Elzera. Well, I okay, mean, so you're gonna follow that, that part of the memory, or that part of the not idea? Not yet, anyway. Because it's probably like that's his personal life, and I said I wouldn't do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, think back to when Emerald was in this grove. Are you going to vocally guide him, or do you want to just try to push through him mentally? Both. Okay. Because I want to. I want Terrace to know that I'm not like. Okay. Make yeah. a persuasion check as you as you. 
kind of push through. Well, it's a 19 plus 0, so 19. Okay. There's a little bit of resistance, um, but you, you kind of get the sense that he's trying to allow it. Yeah. And as you bring up the, the name Immeral, there's no real reaction to the name other than you literally hear yourself describing Immeral, mm -hmm. as in very recently he's recalling the memory that you had. Yeah. And by recalling that, there's a vague image that comes up. Uh, and the vague image is a rec recognizable uh, uh, recognizable form of Emerald, but it looks different. Uh, he, look, he does have both arms at this particular point. But you can see across his face there are numerous silver scars, almost like they were raked across his Ooh. face at that point. Um, you can see that he's dressed in, in rags. Um, you can see this desperate, wild look on, in his eyes. Um, and there are questions. Uh, and you kind of get this weird, uh, almost uh, 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 inception moment as he's asking questions, not entirely unlike what the questions you were. What do you remember? Do you remember when you came here? Do you remember when you were brought here? What do you remember before? Do you remember the, the uh, you know, do you remember living before that question stands out okay. but the responses are all confusion as in i don't know what you're talking about i don't understand what do you mean living before um there is a sort of like a peal of a bell happening at the same time though like each question seems to be ringing a distant bell quite literally in his mind and uh the small form shoves back at Imral, and Imral seems surprised uh, as as he seems to be confused as what just happened. Uh, and then he's restrained, as you see Terex, uh, Terris and uh, Radix on both sides of him, pulling him back away from, from, uh, from uh, uh, Bernard. Can I try to figure out what spell he cast um, that Emerald was using to look in, in, to ask questions? Like not entirely sure, but it's probably the same spell you're using right now. Okay, but more forcefully. Okay, um, as if something else was involved. Um, there is a flash of fire around Emerald, and you see Radix and Terrace turn to ash. There's a moment of absolute confusion in front of, uh, in front foremost of Bernard's mind. And then the memory vanishes, leaving the routine. You need to pick the berries. You make sure they're clean. You need to dry them. You need to separate them. Back to that routine again. The routine will happen. I will not hold you. You're too long, don't worry. Sitting there with this mug in hand, you can actually see that his fingers are growing a little bit white as he's gripping onto it tighter. What did I just see? It was Emerald. He was it is he was using the same spell, but he was more forceful, and I can fill you in on the rest later. I know you are antsy to get back to the routine and And he, he looks over at, at Terrace. Terrace looks quite concerned about what's just happened. As he looks over at Terrace, he's confused because he literally just remembered seeing her being immolated. And there she is. Splashes from the past, mostly. Uh, do you remember what Emerald was after? Just what you saw. And he, he kind of drifts off and you hear... Was there anything about a seed? As you direct that question... The mind starts to react, nope. but does not resist you. Okay. Um, the words, the was there anything about a seed, a seed, a seed, a seed, echoing throughout his mind, as if it's trying to find purchase, uh, bouncing around more and more fervently. You can see now that he's he sort of goes blank faced, and the cup in front of him is starting to droop. Radix right there kind of puts a hand under it and takes it as he just sort of relaxes entirely and stares straight forward. Um, and the question insistently you hear Emerald's voice. 
Where is the seed? We left you here in charge of the seed. I have to get it back. And you hear his voice. Festering has reclaimed the seed. There was nothing I could do. I must go through, says Emerald. And you hear Bernard now seemingly to answer these questions, not unwillingly, but just unwittingly, as though he has no choice but to answer these questions. This feels like a different spell. Uh, the spell that Emerald cast on him before? Yes. Okay. This is not the same I'm peering into your mind. This is I'm compelling you to answer me. He is utterly taking control of, of poor Bernard's mind. Show me where to get through to Festering. The tunnel. The tunnel's the only way. Bernard passes out. The, the connection is severed. Radix reacts immediately, throwing throwing the mug down and kind of picking him up. I'll leave uh, and try to pick him up too. <laughs> uh, Radix is, is there. Terrace is moving forward to block you from from this, seeing as how you're the center of it. Um, He's not hurt. And Floris looks confused and reaches over to him. He needs to sleep. He does. I didn't realize it would strain him. But he is not hurt. Can I, can I do like a quick medicine check? Um, you make it with a disadvantage because Radix and Terrace are not letting you near her. If you can let me near him, I can confirm he's okay. Make a persuasion check if you want to make that work. There's a three. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be at, at a distance at best. All right. So that's a two plus five. Medicine is seven. Seven. He's unconscious but breathing. He's probably not dead. He's breathing. He will awaken. And I can brief you all on what I saw as and I was you see, You see a, a florist extend a flower. It kind of buds over his face, and you see small little particles fall into his face. He seems to breathe deeper. He'll need to sleep now. And Terrace and Radix take him off to another alcove somewhere. Floris is staying with you. Please let me know when he wakes up, or if you need me to help with anything. There's a look that Terrace throws you, which, if it actually could hit, probably would hurt. Um, Floris is, is sort of... Let's let him sleep. Uh, Zakis is a wizard. I hope I've used the right symbol. Yep. <laughs> That's for uh, the Obrama Choco, the devil on the shoulder, as he's described, or they describe themselves. Um, he goes to sleep. Floris is with you. Terrace and uh, Radix come back in the room as well. Terrace looks seething on the edge. Again, that familiar feeling to you. Radix looks uncertain. He isn't hurt. I was able to obtain information. He will... He will be better after he slept, says Radix. Yes, like, of that I have but no doubts. you should not be here when he wakes, says Terrace. Why you not? need to go. I will fill him in on... He said he wanted to understand. I can help him understand, because of what I saw. There are memories in his mind that were blocked. He is better not knowing them. He was better before. He was happy. But he will be happy again. In time, maybe. One of us will go with you. We will take you into the festering. But only one. The other two will remain to make sure that he is safe. Understood. You may rest, but you will be gone before he wakes. How long is he going to sleep? I would like to fill him in on the details that he, he said specifically you were in the room when he said it, that he wanted to understand. I'm afraid it was too much for him, says Flores. Bernard is special. He is. He's and a good person. Perhaps, in time, he will want to know all the things. Yeah, but knowledge generally works like that. It's not a curse, believe me. In fact, it's quite an adventure. You hurt him with his memories, says Terrace. I did not. He was clearly hurt. He will need time. Yes, but I would like to speak to him again, eventually. Perhaps when you return, 
says Radix. You can tell him all the things that you have found. But we must protect him. We protect the grove, says Flores. And he is the grove. As much as anything here. When I share what happened, or what I saw in his mind with my friends, would you like to listen as well, so you can know as well? I want to know all of the things, says Flores, kind of coming forward and leaning forward weirdly as the branches kind of uh, prop her up. She puts both arms just sort of flat out, and she's kind of leaning at a 45-degree angle, just staring at you. It's a little unsettling. Uh, Terrace is standing in front of the alcove where they took uh, Bernard, uh, rooted there at the spot, almost literally. And Radix uh, kind of moves off and then just sort of sinks into the wall of thorns. Around the beginning, uh, well, right, you guys, do you know, have I explained this before, how the magic works? Yes, I have, okay. Anyway, the surface thoughts were of having to perform this routine. Clark clears his throat loudly, interrupting you. What? We should talk later. But. Not now. But Flores wants to know. Not here. But. But I wouldn't know. But I'm keeping no secrets. Maybe on the road. Well, I'm sure Terrace and... Radix? Radix would like to know as well. And I'm sure we can talk to them later. Oh. I'll apologize to Flores. <sighs> I guess it's going to have to wait. She kind of sighs. I know, I know. Put my hand on her. A vine kind of reaches up and holds onto your hand yeah. lightly. <laughs> but when we return, we can discuss what I saw, what we've managed to retrieve, if we've managed to retrieve anything from the festering. And. Okay. From the th- Wall of Thorns. Everything will be okay, Bernard will be happy again. From the Wall of Thorns, Radix asks, and it's hard to tell even where the voice comes from. She's well hidden in there. Which of us will show you the way? And with that decision, I'm going to call for a break. So you guys can talk about it a bit if you want. It's clear the intent uh, from them is that two of them will remain behind, but yeah. one of them will show you. Maybe Terrace can come with us, because... Uh, oh, wait, no. Because she'd be the one to, like, get shit... Like, wreck shit, but she'd also be the one to, like... Leave us in the middle of the forest. Well, I need a moment's pause. Um, <laughs> if you are watching this live, we'll try to make it no longer than 15 minutes. Uh, just to give ourselves a chance to stretch, get a little extra water, and uh, give these guys, if they want, a little uh, away from away from time to to chat a bit. So we shall return fairly shortly. And we return back, refreshed and renewed. Thank you for joining us. If you're watching us live, thank you for watching uh, on the stream or uh, on YouTube later on, where all of those long pauses have been mysteriously vanished. We return to the heart of the grove, in the middle of this strange realm called Shadow. The grove itself, seemingly part of, or recovered from, or having some complex relationship that isn't exactly on paper with the festering. This horribly mutilated forest vast thickness and danger into which it has been suggested that these folks have to go now they are going to have a guide one of the three dryads will be willing to go with you the other two feel that they have to remain to protect Bernard but they stand before you Terrace obviously strong and tough obviously somewhat angry. Radix, whose first instinct seems to be to hide. Or Floris, who seems really trusting, but also has a strange aura about her, of pure power. So, do you discuss it, or how do you come to this conclusion? Or you decide to go on your own. Which one of you has the most experience in the festering? Looking between the three of them, um, Floris says, I don't remember actually going into the festering anytime soon, so probably not me. She sounds very sad. 
Terrace says, says, I have been in many times, not deeply, only as far as I needed to go. It is dangerous. And Radix says, I have been many times. No one has ever seen me go. Hmm. I picked that one. I would say the one with the most experience in festering should be the one to take us. Yes. Oh. Here you hear from the the Thornwoods perhaps regretting her answer suddenly. Or do we have any volunteers? Does anybody want to go in the festering? If it will help Bernard, I would go, says Florence. Terex Terrace is um, grimacing. Your best chance to survive probably lives with me, but the best chance of protecting Bernard also lives with me. That was my thought, exactly. I don't really want to go, says the Wall of Thorns. But if I have to, I'll do it for Bernard. We need to get through without being seen. Radix would be good at not being seen, but could she also help us not be seen? I can help us not be seen. Same here. Okay. And I can guide us. I know the general direction in which to go. But having your knowledge of nature would also make that more efficient. Floris, uh, what was... When we first met, somebody... I won't stare at Terrace. Shot thorns at me, and you spread some flowers on your fingers and made me smell the pollen, and then I felt better. Yes. Do you like my flowers? Yes. They're amazing. Oh. And she extends was... her hand, and a little flower kind of appears on a, on a vine that extends out from her hand, sort of pushes up towards your nose. To which extent can your flowers heal? Or a make little. people better? I only have so many flowers in a day. But I can heal. Hashtag spell slots. <laughs> yes, that could also be worthwhile. Probably. Does that mean you're considering me? Says Flores, suddenly excited. Possibly. I think that the experience would be an asset. Mm -hmm. But also, I don't want to drag someone out who really does not want to go. And I look at the wall. <laughs> what wall? <laughs> Just a wall of, of thorns and vines from which a small voice comes. It is very dangerous. I have not been seen, but I have had to take a lot of time. And I haven't been there since the dragons have been searching heavily. None of us have. Flores, can you defend yourself fairly well? We wouldn't want any harm to come to you, either. Yes. I don't have a lot of practice. Can I make an insight check? Sure. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was near the microphone. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, insight. That is a 20. Er, sorry, no. Not 20. A, a 11, not 21. Math. <laughs> As I realize, I haven't written another, all the things on the sheet that I meant to. Um, can I make an insight check, too? You certainly can, yeah. Um, is she, oh, 24. She, she seems really eager to go. But is she telling us, can she actually defend yeah, herself? Okay. What you get is, is uh, she would do whatever she needs to. Uh, you know, and she, you're pretty sure that she's very convinced that she can do whatever she needs to. Um, you sense that she's very convinced she'll do whatever she can. She's not convinced that she would necessarily be all that great in a fight. As in, she's probably never been in a fight. Yeah. <laughs> How long 
long would it take roughly to make it to the heart of the forest and back, assuming everything went well? None of us have been to the heart of the forest. We can't tell you that. Can I do a quick calculation in my mind, like based on our walking speed and the location where it would be on the map? Unfortunately, you don't know how difficult it is to move through Fester. Right. So you could make an estimation that it would take anywhere from a day to a week. Okay. Which is a long time to leave uh, Bernard unprotected. Curses. Can we take a chance with Floris? She seems to be the most enthusiastic of joining us. It's a very excited look of Floris coming back and forth between you. A couple of involuntary uh, flowers kind of spread <laughs> along her back. She's looking. For, it's almost like a, a almost a, a, a cape or a rope that's a, a <laughs> robe that suddenly appears. Well, you know my vote. What is it? I vote for the sneaky one. Seconded. And how about you, um, Radix? How are you at defending yourself? I've had to defend myself before. Mostly I try not to be there where I need to defend myself. But I can stand my ground if I need to. For a little while, anyway. And you would have us helping as well. Of don't course. We won't just leave you to die. The ideal would be that we don't get... To, uh, we don't have to fight at all. Yes. Yes. I agree. <laughs> Festering is alive. It will know you are there. There's no complete hiding from it. That is true. It's would more the, the dragons I'm afraid of. Would the forest be attacking us with you present? Who are you asking? Just the dryads in general. Um, Flora speaks up. Forest uh, festering is not the grove. Here we are at peace with it. There we would not be. I and have been have... to the edge, and I did not like what I saw. And we have to cross Great Book as well. That you can do through the tunnel. It is the only safe way, says Terrace. The tunnel. Thank you. Yes. I think we should go with Radex. As much as I would like to, to bring you flowers. And a lot of those 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 flowers kind of close down. I wouldn't want anything bad to happen to you. Oh, that's so sweet. She kind of glides across the room and kind of wraps you up I'll, in, I'll in, a, in a hug. Um, you feel weirdly lifted off your feet as the <laughs> vines underneath you kind of extend her up a little bit. That's so, that's so nice. And she makes a little red flower and then plucks it and puts it in your hair. You'll always have me with you now. Thank you. Does that mean I'm going? Because the wall of thorns. I, I think that's the decision. Yeah. Unless, well, you don't seem very keen on it, but just... No one should be keen to walk into danger. No. <laughs> I agree just with this. For Bernard, right? For Bernard. We want him healthy as much as you do. And she steps out of the wall of thorns. Stands a little bit taller, straighter, as if she's working herself up to this. I will go with you. And I will guide you as I can. It's much appreciated. And we won't let any harm come to you. You'd better not, says Terrace on the other side. We will do everything we can. And Floris floats over to her sister, Radix. Oh, and kind of dives <laughs> in with this, this massive hug. And you can see Radix kind of at first a little bit taken aback and then just sort of leaning into it. Very cat-like, actually, at that moment. And I'll give you a flower, too. And Thank she you. gives a little little uh, uh, green flower, weirdly enough. Green petals on this flower to Radix. And Radix kind of adjusts it as a, a small little vine goes up to kind of catch it there. So you ready then? Yes. Yes. Then you will leave when you wake. Uh, does Bernard keep any uh, restorative potions or any potions that can help us if we take harm or if we come to harm? 
There are only the berries. He does have a few things he's concocted, though. Right? Compressing the berries down and, and turning them into a kind of paste. It How tastes very funny, but it seems to work okay. How does it work? Does that ring any bells to me? Uh, make a uh, uh, either an alchemy mm -hmm. or a nature check, or possibly medicine. You get to choose which one you want, which way you want to approach it. Um, alchemy would be which stat? Alchemy would be uh, intelligence, I believe. Okay, then I will go with medicine. Okay. Uh, that is a 24. 24. Um, thornberry is one of the components often used in uh, healing potions. Mm -hmm. um, usually there are other things combined with it, so it's not entirely certain if this would be that kind of potion. Mm -hmm. um, usually there's also water, which seems to be in somewhat limited supply. It's sound. It would probably work. Usually there's more mixed with them, but they can be used for healing potions. Healing beast. Okay. Uh, we've had healing dust. Yeah. <laughs> and, healing, and healing flowers. Healing uh, flowers, dust, stone. Would it be acceptable if we uh, were to use some of this paste on our travels? We'd bring back whatever's left. Um, who specifically are you asking? The group. <laughs> Um, I don't want to like just focus it, on one and offend the other because I know Harris is going to get offended no matter what I do. <laughs> um, it would help us us greatly. It would help us get back quickly, mm -hmm. and would help us get right uh, right back. Uh, from and Terrace, it, there is just a, a sort of harumph of what else are they going to ask for? Um, Floris seems to be overjoyed that you're going to have this and kind of claps your hands a little bit. It has a little one of my flowers in it too, so it tastes kind of less bitter. That's good. Thornberries um, just taste bitter. It's... And Radix says, I will I will go get them. Thank you. A few minutes later, she comes back with two uh, leaf-wrapped packages, mm -hmm. uh, each one about the size of a saltine cracker. And inside there is this, you can kind of smell it. It's thornberry, but it's kind of almost thornberry that's gone off a little bit. So it's a little bit acrid, a little bit smelly. Um, but there's two of those. Um, okay. They are the equivalent of greater healing potions. Um, but they may gag a bit. Oh yeah, I forgot I had those. <laughs> You have your pills, I think, as well. Yeah. <laughs> so, they offer to provide you with a little bit of, of comfort to sleep on. They can bring in leaves. Flores can actually make leaf bedding, essentially, for you. But Terrace is not moving from her spot in front of uh, Bernard's room door. I mean, I'd be okay with Leaving in the morning gives us time to chew spells and stuff. Yeah, same here. Well, whatever counts uh -huh. as morning in this cursed place. Alright. So you're going to take a rest? Clark will take a watch. Okay. Yep. So will I. I'll split the night up. And I'll take a watch as well. I'm okay. just going to sleep. Two hours, two hours, four hours, because I'm awake. Anyway. Eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> the late hours right. sleep, the goal of life. Who's taking first watch? I will. Okay. Make a perception check. Sure. Uh, 18. 24. Okay. Are we still uh, 24? I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. So <laughs> okay, answer. I don't know the question, so right. sure. Uh, as you're there, you do notice that Terrace does not move from the front of that space. Right. But you also realize that she's asleep. She has fallen asleep in the, the sort of standing pose. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see also that little small uh, vines are there to prop her up. Um, so she wouldn't be easy to move if it was. Uh, right. And little vines have kind of tripped across the door as well. That if anybody walked across, there'd be a tripwire. Essentially, that would wake her up most likely. 
Uh, Radix is gone. She goes through the front and just seems to be out there in the, if you will, the front garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Floris has gone deeper into the the uh, grove itself. Um, as you're there, you start to get a headache. Okay. And the headache gets worse mm. to the point where you're getting blinding sparks that are crossing across your vision. Um, Fargo will head over to Ironbound and give him a kick. Okay. Mm-hmm. Your turn. Fargo will try to find a nice cold spot on the floor somewhere. Okay. Are you going to sweep aside the, yeah. the feather? No the creature edge? comforts. Okay. Um, you lay yourself down and your vision goes white. Mm. The sparks have all kind of exploded in complete range of your vision. Hmm. And you find yourself sitting in a room. The room looks like it is well furnished, made of wood, upper class. And across from the room, from you, is a rather well dressed looking elf who seems to be rolling dice, throwing down the table, <laughs> laughing at the result, picking them back up, rolling them again. What do you do? Alas, the elf from dreaming. Um, and he continues kind of picking up the dice, not really noted, paying any attention to them, but he very carefully and easily picking them back up again. And he'd learned to show you. Dreams are magnificent, aren't they? It is almost as though there's another world that we can tap into when we dream. So yes, you are dreaming. But not a normal dream. <coughs> All right. What do you want? I thought I'd speak to you myself. You bear my coin, after all. All right. You have my attention. And you kind of walk over maybe to the table. You notice that every time he rolls these two six-sided dice, double sixes every single time. Mm. Until once, it's double ones. So... Do you know where you are? Not here, I mean. This is all my construction. But do you know where you really are? I have a hunch I'm in the shadow, dreaming. That would be a good hunch. And relying upon your senses is good. But there's something more to it than that. You see, this place that you're in is very special. It was made long, long time ago for a particular purpose. It's a mill, isn't it? That's one way to put it. That's actually pretty accurate. Should have known. The orc blood grows pretty strongly in your form, doesn't it? Yes, yes. Of a sort. You see, it is impossible to learn everything in one life. Trust me, I've met many people who've tried. Some people don't realize that they have to stop living to live even more. Okay. I see you've also found one of my friend's instruments. And you look over and the glaive is standing on its end straight up. We have an understanding. What understanding is that? They want to be present to do their job before we leave the shadow. I assume that they want to play a part in it. That's one way to say it, yes. A long time ago, some of us made an agreement that there were things that stood in the way of what should happen. And so we made an agreement to forge certain gifts for the gifted. It seems as though you've been selected to bear one of my gifts. Quite possibly. You must be careful. It has a dual nature. Mine. 
and another's. And I'm not so sure the others know, the other knows what it's really for anymore. Perhaps you can remind him when you meet him. Hmm. Does you are going to meet Paturo, are you not? I intend to. Good. Is that his name? It's one name among many. Okay. Any messages I should be sending? Carrying for you? Assuming you can't reach him yourself? It is unfortunate that this little realm has um, decided to keep itself so secret. I'm glad you're carrying my coin, however. Messages are so simple. Perhaps just reminding them that he has a duty to perform would be enough. And if he fails that duty, perhaps he needs to move out of the way to allow the duty to be reborn. Okay. Do you have a name? Or should I just assume? I have many names. Yeah, I figured. What name would you prefer? The one you'd be willing to give me now. Call me Marius. Clark will nod and bow. I like you. You have a dual nature right down to your very soul. That's useful to me. I don't fit anywhere else. On the contrary, I think you fit much better than you realize. Now, before I return you back to your comfort and sleep, is there anything you would ask of me? I would ask for the means that I may make good at my debts. Interesting. But the freedom to make them uh, on my own. So you wish me to let you have your freedom? I would like to earn it. I see. What is it you need to make good on these debts? Work? Money? Power? What is your balance, Clara? Freedom of movement. Too much I've been chained to organizations that hamper my progress. I see. I have provisional license uh, through bondage, and I wish to be free of it so I may pay my debts to my family. I see. Well. Wow. How would you like this accomplished? Answer this very carefully. I'd like to see my... Uh, I would like to see my family free of their debt. Uh, the debts that even they don't know about. Able to uh, grow or fade as you decide. How generous. Not really. I think it would happen either way. One never knows what the fates will hold. And he tosses the dice up into the air. And they sort of hang there for a second, spinning. One never knows. It all fades to black. And you find yourself deep in sleep. Mm-hmm. Because I'm a... Mm-hmm. Perception check, please. 
Well, that's a 22, thanks to us being in a tunnel. <laughs> it's very easy to make out the form of Radix, who's trying not to be disturbing, not quite trying to hide, um, but trying not to disturb those that are sleeping, and obviously not yep. intending to, to arouse any suspicion. But moving carefully around you, moving from outside to deep in the grove and back again. Seems to be moving something, but you don't see exactly what they're carrying. Okay. Well, as long as they're not acting any more suspicious than that. I mean, that, it's their grove. They can do what they want. You also notice that Terrace is asleep, but aware. Uh, almost as though uh, she has ceased to keep up what may be an illusion of a living being has become a plant, reactive to its environment. You notice that there are little, little, um, little leaves that have sprouted. Very small, but ever so often they move slightly, as if moved by wind. But you feel no wind in the room. Plants are weird. Um, you also notice moving across the ceiling, uh, Floris, trying not to disturb anyone, is now kind of literally flying across the ceiling, connected to it. Um, but she notices that you notice her, and she just sort of winks and smiles and giggles a little bit and moves out through the tunnel to the outside. You remember stories of dragons, stories told to you when you were younger, some of bewilderment, some of danger. You remember that they are territorial, if they've claimed something. And you start to wonder about what's going on because it seems as though they have tried to claim an unclaimable land. How are they surviving there? How are they forcing their existence to be there? And given what you've heard of the Fester, which isn't a lot, mind you, it seems as though you have two titans fighting, and you're going to be caught in the middle. Mm-hmm. That happens to little people. Indeed. Just be aware where they step. And as you start to think on that, it passes, time passes. Who's the next in the shift? I have the next four hours. Okay. Kuzumaya wakes you up. Almost had it, almost got through a session without the same thing. <laughs> Kuzumaya yeah. wakes you up. And I just say, you okay? Yep. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> as you wake up, you can't help but notice the still glowing of the ring. But now you feel palpably both tugs. The one that's just there, mere feet away. Somehow still connected, but not. You remember his reactions to the probes that, that uh, Zakis was putting in his mind. How it seems as though Imral was not only here, but was digging for something. And I don't know what you described necessarily mm -hmm. of all the vision. Did you describe everything, including what Emerald did to Terrace and Radius? I hadn't described any of them yet. <laughs> Nothing at all? No. Okay. Oh, okay. No, Clark suggested yeah. we wait until later. Okay. So, so you, you would have heard, though, the things that he had said out loud and the stress that it caused him. Um, and you, you think on that and you wonder how they're connected, how this grove is connected to both of them. There is a center My family point. is fucked. <laughs> <laughs> that also occurs to you, uh, thinking back on the family line and how often it has come back into this. Uh, and it makes you wonder, um, what happened here? What did they do? What were they looking for? Why did they do all this? And the questions keep spinning in your mind. I won't have you bother to make the role for the perception check. But I am going to make maybe a stupid decision. Cool. Um, kind. because I have the AC of shit, but I'm going to unattune my ring of protection and reattune the doll. Okay. Because the doll seemed to not want to be unattuned. Okay. Um, you concentrate on severing that connection to the ring of protection. It's gone easily. It takes a while to fade away, but you find no effort required necessarily to do that. Um, when you pick up the doll and start to focus on it, um, you look at it, and it's probably just the way it was made. Those eyes really seem to dig into you. Like it's just there on the edge of hope. And when you concentrate on it, you can feel this surge 
of energy and a weird little bit of emotion. An emotion that, that actually feels very familiar to you. It is the desire to protect. And there's a paternal feeling to it. I'm sorry, not paternal, fraternal feeling. Um, the, the, the sort of feeling that you would have I guessed uh, that uh, Riordan and Milo had. Certainly the feeling you felt for your brother numerous times. And there's almost a conspiring feeling as it's going to work with you. It's a little bit chilling because this doll seems to have taken on an aspect you had not seen before. Yeah. All of the random things that I've had on me. <laughs> Is it called Annabelle by any chance? <laughs> um, you've never asked its name. Again, you notice Terrace there, now awake. Um, and kind of looking over her shoulder, uh, almost tentatively tugging at and making sure all of these small vines that are growing out are still in place. Mm-hmm. Uh, and she just glares at you, just staring at you with, with not exactly anger. It's more like, what have you done to us? The sort of concern of everything was fine until you came. She doesn't say anything, though. She doesn't say anything, but I get that vibe. It's better that this shit show happens while we're here to help than it explode when we're not. Just because things seem okay doesn't make them okay. And she kind of harumphs a little bit. And you see her extend out her right and her left hand. And in the right and left hand you see thorns that have curved out and twisted together into two very vicious looking weapons. Short swords really would be the same equivalent, but they're made out of pure thorns. Mm -hmm. um, and she just starts to kind of maneuver and stretch, and you can hear kind of the bone-like, or the rather the wood-like texture of her skin almost crack as she moves and stretches in, in ways that to some might seem meditative, mm -hmm. but to you it's like a slow motion fight, and she's staring at you the entire time. And you get the sense of, of a, a kind of the similar feeling in a way to the doll, protection. But also this... this. I am the threat right now. <laughs> looking at you is the most dangerous thing in the room. Yeah. By far. Redix is nowhere to be seen during your time. But you finish your, your uh, shift without any further worry. Now, mechanics-wise, does mm -hmm. the doll do anything different? Um, it does not appear to do anything different, okay. um, but uh, you get the sense that it is a more active participant now in your life, okay. whereas before it was a passive participant. It would basically allow you not to fall. Now there's something more, okay. but you're not sure what will happen until the moment. Okay. Doesn't affect stats. In that doesn't, affect stats. <laughs> doesn't affect stats. Doesn't affect stats. Alright. Um, your shift ends. Do you wake Zach up, or are you just going to do the three shifts? I well, meditate she, for four hours and stay awake for a four, so... So you're staying yeah, awake. Yeah, she takes a double shift. Okay. I, I take a double shift. And you're leaving Zach to rest, or...? Yeah. Right. He gets cranky in the morning. <laughs> okay. I got those tasty teeth, <laughs> which Bernard can't make. Oh, no! <laughs> I can um. I'm sure I can figure out how to make tea. <laughs> With you the berry awake. I'm very familiar with. <laughs> Going through your mind constantly now, probably because you spent so many extra hours looking at those books, magical formulae are just sort of drifting through. You kind of drift through this dream of bookshelves everywhere where you reach out, and there's the book you wanted, and here's another book that you wanted, and here's another book that you wanted, and you kind of... <laughs> Just absorb them right directly, as if no effort whatsoever. You can feel the enlightenment happening. And then, why does my back feel a little bit sore? And then you wake up on the leaves, which are giving some, some uh, softness to you, but right. it's a little bit cold, it's gray, <sighs> it's dim, and there are no books in sight. That's the bad thing about the good dreams. You always wake up from them. Crack. 
<sighs> so, are we all ready? Did anybody make tea by any chance? Uh, Tara, uh, Terrace is just sitting there glowering at you. I have dried berries. I wonder if there's any tea left. Anyway. Uh, there is some cold tea, says Radix. Oh, that'll have to do. It's it's a good refresher. And she goes to the pot that, that was made last night and actually pours out cups of tea and hands them to each of you. Yes. I warm mine. <laughs> okay, it starts to steam. Um... And you have the tea. It, I warm his. It, it, I'll drink it cold. Mind, yeah. <laughs> cold, it's a little bit more like a uh, like a green tea. Heated, it takes on more of a berry-like flavor. Yeah. Um, so there's a very mild, but still relaxing flavor to it. Um, Mechanics-wise, effectively right now, you are resistant to frightened for the next hour, but it's probably not going to come up. Uh, and it hasn't really been a concern when you've had the tea at this point, but just to know that's one of the effects of the tea. Which actually is not entirely unlike some of the tea that your dad makes. Uh, I think, it's not, is it black moss tea? Black moss tea is the curing tea, I think. Yeah, it might be. I thought black, black moss was that one in, like, in uh, Igro. Or... Yeah. Yeah, that was the super oh, stay sorry. awake. Yeah. That's right. That, that was, was the awake. That was the awake. Caffeine tea. tea. Yes. <laughs> I, I should know that one. So I guess that was that one. Um, I don't have my binder with all of my loose... So. Fair enough. Uh, Terris is still standing where she was. Radix is giving you the tea, and Floris emerges from the the, uh, the tunnel back to the surface. Um, I made these for you, and she comes over with uh, these wreaths of flowers, uh, multiple colors of flowers. They're fading fast, you can see, so she must have just made them. But she goes forward and tries to put them on each of you. Do you accept? A politely decline. She looks kind of crestfallen. I take it from her and put it on his head. <laughs> kind of throw it to her. Be nice. Head. Do you just take it off or refuse to take it, put it on at all? You won't remove it. Okay. So you get that, the sort of... <laughs> and then she puts it on one on yours. I'm assuming you take it. Does uh, Kuzima accept the, the reef? Mm-hmm. Okay. Is she bigger than me or smaller than me? She's taller than you, but she's also propped up mm-hmm. on the vines as well, so it's hard to see her true height. Yep. For you, she actually kind of both bends down and is supported by these to put them on. It actually is a smaller reef as well, kind of proportioned. So and it wraps it around my neck and tries it as well. strangle me. Uh, and then she takes one more and gives it to Radix, uh, who is kind of surprised and looks up at, at her sister, presumably, uh, who looks down on her from the, the perch of, of vines. For good luck. Thank you. Come back to me, and she says specifically to Radix. Radix kind of shyly. I will. Uh, has anything happened with Bernard? Is he awake? Feeling better? Did he stay in his sleep? He's still sleeping, says right. from, or Terrace from across the room. I'll take it nothing has changed since last night. He's resting. He will get better. He is not injured. He will get better. He wasn't injured, says Flores. Exact same words that you just said. Um... I'm going to make my own flower. Okay, druid craft. craft. Okay. Uh, a purple rose. Ooh. And I'm going to give that to her. To Flores? Uh, to Flores. Could you make sure he gets that, please? I will. It's pretty. I've never seen one like that before. And the vine appears from her hand and... Yeah, it's not the same. <laughs> she doesn't really understand this plant, but it comes out more like an orchid than a rose, and the color's not quite purple. It's more of a reddish thing. Given all the thorn berries around, it's not surprised that red would be one of the colors she knows how to replicate. Yeah. Uh, I'll keep working on it. And she kind of takes it and tucks it in, and you can see some sort of vines wrap around that hold it in place, mm-hmm. almost holding it onto the, the vines that are covering it. Good luck. And she dives in for a <laughs> hug once more. She can't help herself. A hug back. We need to go, says Radix. We do? Yeah. And I will cast Pass Without a Trace on all of us. Okay. Uh, before she does that, I'm going to make some tiny servants. Okay. I am going to use a little five, I believe, that makes five of them. Okay. So Who are your tur- tiny servants today? 
Uh, let's see. I guess to make it easy, it'd be uh, three candles and uh, the two potions I've been using. Okay. There's a squeal of delight from Floris as these little things come to light, come to life, I should say. And uh, she kind of bends down, and she's kind of being held aloft, but like she's almost crawling next to them. They're so cute. And then she tries to poke at one, and it kind of dances out of her. Out of her <laughs> Um, mm. uh, Terrace just sort of looks down her, her nose at these things like why are you creating toys now but she doesn't say such if you follow me says Radix yeah, I'll follow. she leads you to the back of the cavern what looks to be nothing more than another wall, wall of vines through here and as she walks the vines part revealing a narrow tunnel only about six feet wide only about five feet tall. Most of you have to to bend down a little bit. It's a little bit awkward to carry the glaive. No problem for because I'm of course yep. one of the tiny servants, and no problem for Radix as well, who's a bit smaller. She's taller than Kuzima is, but now that you actually fully see her, which is one of the rare occasions she hasn't shown herself very much, she does appear to be smaller, um, midway between say a dwarf and a human somewhere in there. Very lithe, very thin. Uh, her skin is a dark, dark, deep green, uh, but smooth, not like uh, Terex's rough bark, like ex external exterior. As we're leaving, mm -hmm. I'll also tap Clark on the shoulder and mm -hmm. cast Long Strider. Okay. So you have an extra mm -hmm. feet of movement. So you start to feel yourself speed up somewhat. Yeah, back to from the, the uh, from the the old man crawl you've been doing for a while there. For an uh, hour. <laughs> It's a strong dwarven shuffle. Oh, oh, fine, yes. And there needs to be a dance and, and, and yeah, illustration and mm. something of that. All right, uh, I'm distracted because the, the video is jumpy a little bit. Hopefully you're seeing this clearly at home, one way or the other. Um, you proceed in this tunnel, uh, which looks as though it was carved out. There's not really signs of tools so much as uh, the rough stone that was probably smashed against other rough stone to create this. It proceeds to go downward, um, and it sends a pretty hev uh, heavy slope. Uh, Radix is moving along quite cautiously and slowly. Um, and after about uh, 15 minutes, uh, the terminal has turned a little bit and turned back. From your perspective, it went it went kind of north towards the ember uh, skull and then turned sharply uh, sort of southwest, so it kind of curved around has been going down steadily. At this point, you're estimating it must be 100 feet underground, mm -hmm. strangely. Um, after that half an hour, you start to hear the sound of water running. Radix turns back. This part goes under the Grey Brook. It's the quickest and safest way. But the Grey Brook... The Grey Brook has a lot of force. And it's been active. I've seen some things moving in it that they scared me. So be careful where you step. Stay away from any water. Got it. Yes. Absolutely. Are you all ready? And you get the sense that she's not really asking you so much as she's asking herself. She nods. So I'm passed without a trace of this up. Follow me. And you proceed down the tunnel. You can... The tunnel now has grown completely dark. I think everybody has dark vision of one kind or another. Mm -hmm. um, you actually have it sort of by virtue as well. Yeah. Um, I have blind sight. True. Yeah, he's got a doubly over. Um, as you proceed down this tunnel, you do start to hear the sound of running water. Just, just a really more of a drip that grows stronger and stronger as you come along. You see the water kind of oozing out of the wall, wall and kind of drooping this little puddle by the side. The tunnel's still very narrow, so you have to kind of squeeze a little bit to move by that. I'll ask uh, Radix, is it safe to turn on a light? If it would help? Can you not see? I can, but would the light help? You would probably avoid the puddles better, yes. Do you guys want a light? I don't need it. If you wish. I don't need it terribly, but... uh. Okay, no light. All right. Just the convenience. <laughs> um, you feel 
movement around your chest. And you hear this. <sighs> Where are we going? As you notice Prina pop up from your pocket. Hi, Prina. Um, a lot of things have happened. Where are we? We're in a dimension kind of called the flies ship. out. You can see it pulls out her small little sword. Yeah, that won't help us here, unfortunately. Where are we? We're in a realm called the Shadow. Oh. Where's that? We don't know. Some people call it hell, some people call it the afterlife. She kind of takes one finger. I haven't been here before. Neither have we. And hopefully we'll never be here again, unless it's the way back. Why are we here? What did I miss? We fell into a trap. Later, Bruno. Go back to sleep. Oh, Sarah's here. Yes, Sarah's here. The usual um, group is here, plus a new friend. Meet Radix. She's a dryad. And she kind of flies off towards the front. And there's a small Careful. whispered conversation that you can't really hear all that well. There's a little squeal at first from Radix, as she seems to be somewhat surprised, as there was an extra person she wasn't expecting. It's okay, she pokes people in the nose all the time. Um, you move along for another ten minutes. You can still hear the water overhead. Radix is setting a very slow pace, very carefully setting up where she's moving, and occasionally having to tell you there's a small rivulet of water across the, the way. Make sure you step clear of it. Because um, I'm uh, scouting ahead. So you're going to go ahead of Radix? Mm hmm. Okay. Is Prina like, back in my pocket now? Or? Uh, Prina's staying with Radix at the moment. Okay. She's met a new friend. Okay, don't let her get in. Don't let her near any water. <laughs> um, and don't feed her after midnight. Because <laughs> it's only like a drop here and a drop there, but Prina's like not very big. <laughs> Three of you make a perception check, mm -hmm. not including because I'm up. Maybe? Yep. Mm -hmm. 15. Wow. I rolled The world set. must be weighing heavily on Elzera. Wow. Well, okay. an unnatural, but... Still. 25. Wow. It's, just, it's like, what, 15, 20, 20? Are you serious, guys? All right. Zacchaeus is on high alert because now Prina came out, and now he doesn't want her to get hurt, so he's extra alert. That's that's fair. Elzera's <laughs> following her ring, and the ring is saying go that way. But yeah, there's a little bit of faint light that would be coming from the ring, actually. It's okay. not enough to really illuminate the space, but enough that you could pick her out of the darkness. Um, you can find my corpse. Congratulations. <laughs> Lauren, you're the first to sense something. And you're not sure what it is you're sensing. It feels like... intent? That's when the wall above and behind you collapses as water pours rushing through it. Pouring down into the tunnel, the rocks are starting to collapse. And a figure steps through. I shouldn't say a figure, it's... A creature steps through. Hmm. From the brief glimpse that you get, illuminated by the little bit of light that shines through the the multiple layers of gray book that are above, above you, it seems to have three legs, and there's something thrashing along its side. Up front, Kuzaima, make a perception check. Thirteen. Thirteen. You gaze on ahead and see a creature blocking the path, taking up nearly the entirety of the tunnel, standing in front of you. I send a message back to Clark saying, there's something up here. And then you do that, that's when the explosion of the, of the ceiling happens, and you see the water rushing towards you. Now, we have a question. This mm -hmm. ain't good. This looks like a combat. Do we think we have time enough for a combat? We're sitting at 10 after 7 for the moment. Okay. Depends on the size of the combat. I mean, if it it's two things, then we can probably do that. Okay. Yeah. We can certainly try, and if it doesn't work out, then we can... Uh, we can always pause for next time. We can always pause for next time. All right. So I need to get a marker, and we'll set up a little bit of the place here where I'm going This was supposed to be safe. <laughs> Nothing <Yeah>. is safe. <laughs> All right, I guess I would have been filling you guys in with details, but I mean... It wouldn't really work because we have to be careful to not step on anything. Clark would also ask you to be quiet. Yeah. <laughs> Clark doesn't want the information to be shared. No. But but we need to know. It would be good information to know. <laughs> it's good for us to know. It's not good for other audience members to know. 
Not you folks. I mean, <laughs> the, the, the dry, dry druids. She's yeah. alright. She's helping us. Yeah. The druids. You gotta grab the Zykus May before he gets decapitated by the board. And somebody remind me when I sit back down to make sure that I turn on the overhead. <laughs> for those of you who are waiting at home. Alright. Turn on the overhead. <laughs> <laughs> Not sitting down yet. <laughs> Hark a grid. Hark a grid. So I'm standing at the open end, what? filling the tunnel. One end. Mm. Is that creature? I know what that is. Because I might not, though. Is that the tunnel behind you is blocked? So I'm probably not and there. And water is flushing in. Please place yourselves accordingly on there. Probably in the and middle for somewhere. Those of you watching at home, I assume. I'd be in front of Clark. So well, you guys are probably towards the back, Clark. Yeah, because it more or less dropped in right front of on right you. behind you. Oh, okay. So like here-ish. Yeah. So we were coming from this way. Oh, no. Well. On this way. Can someone pass me my money? Alright, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been not too far from Clark because uh, oh, yeah. Clark is strong. I would say that. It's not so true. But slightly it's farther, sustained. like slightly far enough, just in case this glaive like goes ape shit. There we have. Oh, cool. My almost painted dryad. Mm -hmm. back away, because I was ahead some, but ahead, yeah. I can see 90 feet ahead of me, so mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how far, uh, there, but uh, that should be fine. It'd be a shame for you to run 90 feet ahead of us and we can't see you anyway. So. Mm -hmm. You can't see me as it is. You can't see yeah. me. <laughs> All right. Uh, now I need to switch pages to the other one where the thing has all of its things. All the things. Oh, and I should probably change my AC on my paper. The one thing you do notice about the thing in front of you is normally you would have been able to see it, but it appears to be fuzzy. Almost as though it's intentionally being being hidden. Cool. Shall we roll initiative? Two. <laughs> <laughs> Just a second here. Well, four, but still. Yeah. No, three. Yeah, all right. I had that number, but I had other numbers to go with it. <laughs> And for simplicity's sake, uh, we'll actually have Prina move on Radix's turn, because that's where she's proximity to. All right. Oh, oh no. And, uh, Why did she come out now? <laughs> because we're in another dimension. Of course she's going to die again. <laughs> Gotta collect them all, I guess. <laughs> she's gonna have, like, a tattoo of, like... All the planes of existence and like co colored in are all the ones she's died in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, uh, twenty-five to thirty. It's always a chance for this group. Uh, twenty to twenty-five. Okay. Uh, Awkward silence. <laughs> okay. Uh, Fifteen to twenty. Ooh. Ten to fifteen. Thirteen. Eleven. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> So we've got Clark. I have a plus eight, and I got an eleven. Oh, wow! <laughs> well, roll shit. <laughs> oh, what, what was your die roll next? Two. <laughs> oh no! All right. Let me make sure I get these right. And uh, you'd think it was like not recently they did this. Uh, five to ten. Whoa. Okay. Uh, zero to five. <laughs> Threes. Which one has the higher deck? I have the higher deck. Oh, like, so yeah. I rolled the higher deck, but I also rolled a one. Okay. Do with that as you will. <laughs> oh, I have one more to insert in there. What is her bonus? May the creatures roll shitty as well. All right. Wow. Okay. Um, right in between you all. Uh, star A is Radix. Now, I have Radix's uh, sheet here. If someone wants to play Radix, they can do so, or I can do it myself. I don't want to babysit okay. the MP. Nope, uh, I, don't, I don't want that responsibility. That's fine yeah. by me. Same. I've got, I don't five, to die I'm I've got five dolls already. Fair enough. And they move on your initiative, right? Is that mm -hmm. what we determined before? Okay. 
Uh, yeah, the spell doesn't say, so... I think it's a good assumption. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the general way. Clark, you're the first to react. All right. Uh, well, arm himself, turn around and away lay this thing. Okay. Before it gets a chance to act too, too badly. All right then. Are you moving closer to it or? Oh it yeah, yeah. He'll. Uh... Or does the blade have enough range? Yeah, actually, I got the range. I can just yeah. stay right there. Okay. Why not? Uh, one of those is a crit. Ooh. Good sir. Um. Makes up for all the initiative numbers. Here we go. Mm. See, we don't have to hit. He just has to crit. Like, what 26 we and a crit to hit. Uh, <laughs> I think the 26 hits. Okay, cool. I'm fairly certain that so it that hits. That means two hits, then. All right, then. Uh, one of which was a crit. Yeah, yeah, I like that. <laughs> Let's do the not crit one first. Just for the sake of warming up a little bit. All right. Uh, 1d10. Ugh. Oh, I can reroll that, though. Great. <laughs> Not much better. It's better though. Six. Uh, and seven. So six uh, slashy damage and one that, necrotic. That's a one. Can't you reroll that? Perhaps. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah. Uh, six, seven, eight, uh, with two of them being necrotic. Okay. Uh, the next one. One, two, where'd you go? Twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, with four of that being all, all the dice are. Yes. Uh, still, oh. no, still going. Oh, okay. Wait, still so going as in damage? More, more damage, yes. Yeah. Right. Beat down. Okay, all these two. Better. Uh, nine, 16. With another three, 19. With three of it being necrotic. So it was 20 on the previous one plus 19? Yeah. It's 39. All right. Ooh. Uh, nicely done. And then I'll swing it a second time. Excuse me, third time. <laughs> All right. Um, great weapon master. Blah. Um, Not a crit. 14, 14 to hit, meh. 14 just barely misses as it blazes yeah, off its, okay. uh, its tough hide. There we go. So you spin around and one fluid motion. The blade goes straight, almost on its own. Not, not staying either down or staying up to give you that extra bit of length. Uh, carves into the front face of this thing. I should describe, they have three legs. A dark brown, uh, tough, hugging hide. Their mouth is this, this massive alligator-like mouth, but with all the teeth facing outward and long and pincer-like. It has two uh, tentacles on either side, which have these barbed uh, 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 pads at the end. And one tentacle above, strangely, that kind of runs from the back with three eyes across one side that it gets to kind of look that way so it can't mm. run up above. Um, as the first one slashes it, kind of catching it as its, as its gaping maw opens up and you slice into it, cutting a part of its cheek away. The second one cutting deep into one of the shoulders. And the third one as it kind of swings that, that, uh, that arm over that is now nearly severed from the hit uh, but is able to deflect the blade as it bounces off of its skin. Uh, it looks pained significantly from that uh, from that hit all right is that your that's, my that's your turn whole thing yeah. okay it gets to respond now however now you've moved away from it by a little bit nope nope i thought you had kept distance i got reach right. so i just like yeah but how much is there is it like no nope. there's no one square right. between them yeah. okay so we'll just close in on the square oh, there we go. um and proceeds to open up its maw wide and try to try to eat my face, eat your face, yeah. kind of turning slightly, so it's actually I'm trying to trying to eat your eat your stomach. Sure, who needs uh, that anyway? <laughs> um, yep. Yeah, okay, can't overhear that, so that's fine. That is a sixteen to hit. Yep, you'll hit. Oh, okay. Uh, why need dice? Where are my dice. Where's my dice? I didn't have these ones out. Uh, um, you take 14 points of piercing damage. 
Is it mundane piercing damage? Uh, yes, it is. I'll spend a reaction to cut it in half. Okay. So what do you As get? As it kind of scrapes across your front, uh, so that'd be five okay. piercing damage. Thank you. Uh, you do still have to make a Constitution saving throw. Certainly. Uh, against disease. The disease. Seventeen. Seventeen. Yeah. As you feel the the uh, the edge of these uh, nasty, long, jagged teeth peer out at you and scrape across your skin. There's a little bit of searing pain where, where it uh, is <coughs> scraping across any exposed space. Mm -hmm. uh, and you uh, kind of grimace and grit and tighten your stomach and it doesn't seem like it took hold. Okay. But it smells awful. Uh, then, having kind of lashed out at you with, it, with its uh, face, then proceeds to wham, wham, hit you with the two tentacles. Or yes, try. Hit me with the tentacles. Try. Uh, 20 and a 16. Yep, it hit both times. Alright. For 8 bludgeoning damage and 5 piercing damage. Uh, okay, uh, 8, 5, 13. And then the second one, uh, 7 bludgeoning and 7 piercing. And that's another 14. Okay. As the tentacles hit you, and then the spikes kind of go. <laughs> And that lash into you. Yuck. You're now considered grappled. Okay. Gross. At the other end, uh, it moves forward. Yep, it can close the distance there between. Uh, it can't see me. Uh, you're invisible. It can, that doesn't mean it can't see you. Uh, there's a little difference there because it can still look mm -hmm. invisible and fun. But it does see. What is that up there? Dolls. Uh, yeah, the other things with me are the dolls. Uh, which I'm currently wearing, okay, uh, and then there's the yeah radix and uh, the radix is a bit flabby. further back. But what's why are there two features? Two creatures up there? Because of the little no 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 where back, you back, are. Back, back. Those are my dolls. Oh okay. okay. I just put them out there for so I remember. I was like somebody else is doing the fight. I didn't see them. Ah okay. Um, they're clinging to my backpack currently. Okay. Well, they're basically being carried by you, so the same mm -hmm. same issue. Uh, Right. Okay, well, it can... I think it can still make a perception check to try to find me. It just has disadvantage because I'm invisible. Uh, yeah, we'll see if it happens to see you. Oh, that's better than I thought. Uh, 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 it seems to be aware that you're there and is taking swipes at you, but it still can't really see you, so they're blind swipes, essentially. Uh, it's going to swing at a distance, so move it up within 10 feet. And then it's going to lash out with the two tentacles. Okay. Uh, first one is a 13 to hit. Hit. Um, second one is a 8 to hit. Does not hit. So as one of the tentacles goes swooshing over your head and kind of smashes into the side wall, cracking in, uh, into the, some of the stone, the other one connects, taking, or you take 7 points of bludgeoning damage and 3 points of piercing damage. Uh, and you feel the the uh, the claw-like uh, extrusions uh, bite into you, and it has grappled you. Okay. It is Kuzumaya's turn. Kuzumaya's turn. I was doing so well. Mm -hmm. Uh. Hmm. And up close, even this distance, you you notice that its surface seems to be somewhat blurry. Well. Uh, I'm going to try to get out of the grapple. Okay. Mm. Oh, you grappled that and restrained. Sucks. So keep that open. Okay. Uh, 16. 16 is enough. So you wriggle free of the uh, of the spikes, kind of having to kind of push yourself off of them. That's pretty much taking you off your feet at this point. But you are free. Uh. Okay. So I believe that's your action. action. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, as a bonus action, uh, I tell the dolls to uh, I tell the potion dolls to head back and help Clark and the other uh, 
the candle dolls to uh, attack the one in front of me. Okay. What's the so, speed of the dolls? Let's see. 30 feet. Oh, wow. They're fast little buggers. Dump, 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 Do they sing? Six. They cannot speak in any way. They know. Uh, <laughs> as though they're dancing to an unheard song. And the dolls will attempt to clobber the giant beastie. Okay, then. Do they get surprised since they just kind of... No, I already knew I was there. Never mind. Um, you get advantage because you're invisible. Uh, yeah, you but know. they're not. That's true. And it, it had grabbed me, so I would know that there was something there. So. Yeah. Okay. 23 to hit on the first one. Wow, yeah. <laughs> Wow. These dolls will be the death of me. Five blunt damage. Wow. Nice. Natural 20. <laughs> <laughs> Handle sticks for the for wind. second one. For nine blunt that. damage. Wow. And a 14 on the third one. Uh, 14 just misses. Actually, yep. it scrapes off of its hide. But the other two proceed to kind of go over and just... Which doesn't seem to do anything until it happens to get right between like two toes and hit that sensitive part that probably mm -hmm. was already a bit. bit or they get between two toes and go. Eh! Exactly, <laughs> exactly. It lets out. It lets out a a a, a uh, perturbed uh, yell of of ferocity. Oh shoot! Uh, those are with disadvantage. It is it is currently under the effect of blur. Ah. I'm describing the blurry effect that I mentioned before. The first one would still have been a, a non-natural 20. Sure. Oops. The second one would have been a miss, so ignore the nine points of damage. And the third one already missed. Yeah. Would have missed by more. So, yeah, it's got this sort of hazy... hazy now, is it still blurry even after the first one hit? Uh, yes. Okay. Does not seem to affect it. Uh, that makes it, uh, uh, you can still move or do something, or a bon you've got a bonus action in your turn or you've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, all I've got left is movement, but uh, I'll just move one square to the side. Okay. Uh, it is Radix's turn. Uh, let's see, what does Radix want to do? Um... Hmm. Here's the danger of not having that particular thing up. I can't tell what that spell does. Pardon me. Oops. Um, I can't tell us it's a secret. Okay. No, I, I just want to be able to read it for myself here. But, uh, it's uh, Ensnare. Ooh. Um, now that I don't know. But I think that's one you prepare for. I can't type. It's only got six letters, and it took me four times to type it here. <laughs> and I type, I still typed it wrong. It's ensnaring Sorry, strike. Sorry, tangled. That's uh, it, okay. Using the wrong word. Yeah, this one she had used for a while. 20-foot <laughs> square, starting from a point within 90 feet. One-a-minute concentration. Uh... Succeed on a strength saving roll or be restrained by entangling plants until the spell ends. Can take an action to make a strength check against the spell okay. to see to get free. So she will she will uh, sort of reach forth, and a, a little bit of green glowing energy kind of shimmers along the ground until <laughs> erupting out of the ground. Around it are these vines and and uh, weeds surrounding it. Um, the dolls are more or less on it, but they're not really the target of the spell. Yeah. Uh, although it is difficult to run. Yeah, uh, or the dolls are just held there, but they're busy beating on its toes anyway. All right. Uh, that is her turn, and she's going to stay where she is. Uh, that makes it Elzera's turn. Uh, I will ask her, how good are you with being restrained? I don't enjoy it. How are, good are you getting out of it? Just by seeing what's going on. Um... I'm, I don't understand, but I can probably wriggle free. What are you thinking? Um, That's pretty much when you got to do something. Yep. Fireball. 
Dinosaurs. I just know it's not a good spot for lightning bolts. I am going to... That or it's a perfect spot for lightning bolts. I want to kill my party mates. <laughs> We're not standing in the water. <laughs> the water is down. starting to pool actually up at this end. And yeah. each round it is filling in somewhat. Uh, I'm going to cast... How far are people from me? 30 feet... feet okay um i see water you see gray brook i see gray brook showing up um we're in it <laughs> yep well i still have my hands free i'm going to cast water breathing on everyone okay how many targets is that up to 10 willing creatures Okay, that should cover everybody you can see. And last 24 hours. Uh, yep. Yeah. Uh, that is my action. Um, you all feel this strange sensation as small openings open up in your, th in your throats. Just because I see water coming in. Don't like this. Uh, and I am going to... That's my turn. That's what okay. I'm going to do. Staying where you are? Yeah. All right. Zachis. So that one looks pretty bad, right? It looks much worse than the other one in front of you, but they all look pretty bad. Yeah. Firebolt. Okay. And that's a 7 plus 13, so... Or is that 14? <laughs> yeah, that's a hit. 11. Okay. So 18. Okay. Total. Yeah. Yep, that's a hit. <laughs> Hey, that's not bad. Dang. So 15, 22. Fire. 22? Boom. Oh, a firebolt. Holy moly. Yeah. You guys are getting powerful. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, and the, the dice just landed really well. <laughs> Something landed really well, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, the firebolt kind of whizzes around. You can see that, that uh, Clark is currently kind of bound up by this one that's pierced his, his skin a little bit, and he's almost being held by it. But the, the firebolt whizzes on through, hits it kind of in the mouth and kind of there's a moment of nothing that <laughs> then smoke uh, blowing out is of that it. one fuzzy too or is this no. the only one that's not good only that one uh that's your action yeah and Move i moved your, a little bit. okay uh back around the top was, yeah back around the top first thing that happens is i will advance the water marker oh. as the water is flowing into the tunnel at about that point right now it would be considered difficult terrain as the water is about a foot and a half deep. Do you want to just put a pencil across? Uh, yeah, we can do that. It's even blue. It's even blue. Clark. Uh, attacking on the other creature. Yeah. You are currently restrained? I am, but I can still attack. It just happens to do it at uh, a disadvantage. It can't move. Yes, so you're at a disadvantage. So first swing. Uh, eight. Uh, 14. That's a miss, I think, from this. That's with thing. disadvantage? That's with disadvantage. Okay. 14? Yeah. 14 is again kind of scraping That's off the hide. Okay. It's hard to get that angle on it. It seems like its hide is extraordinarily thick. Second swing. Uh, 13. 13. Yeah, unfortunately, you're getting off balance. You're just kind of being jerked around by this, and the, the cold water is starting to filter around your feet. You feel your feet go somewhat numb as the water rolls over it. Okay. Uh, I will, as a bonus action, then use second wind to get some hit points back. Okay. As you focus in and draw breath, mm. draw strength almost from the weapon itself. All right, healing ten. That's really easy. Uh, as that one proceeds to, with you uh, stuck up against it, slam you into the wall. Yeah, it would do that. Uh, make a Constitution saving throw. Sure. Twenty-four. Twenty-four is enough. Yeah. Uh, I hope you so. You find yourself only taking uh, three points of bludgeoning damage, and you manage to twist just enough so your head is not smashing into the wall. Is it bludgeoning damage? It's mundane. It's mundane. I'd like to use my 
Uncanny dodge to have the damage of one attack. Okay. So it goes so, down to two. Uh, yeah. Uh, it does still have a free tentacle. That's fine. Okay. I gotta do it at some point. So. Um, uh, two makes it eight. Okay. As it uh, proceeds to actually hmm, move with you, oh. kind of along with the water, uh, moves to there. Wee. Uh, and proceeds to try to bite you. Don't like, don't like, don't like. Uh, that is... You get advantage, by the way. Yeah. Uh, 19. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. And that does uh, 16 points of piercing damage. Okay. Make a constitution saving throw. Uh, one moment. As it <laughs> chomps in. Natural 20, so that's... <laughs> 20, so okay. Damn your orcish 27? hide, as you once again sort of flex in the right way that Oops. the little little dirty ends of its teeth did not make contact. Ready? Uh, and then it proceeds to lash out the other tentacle towards... I think Zachis is right there. And 10 feet mm-hmm. away. Yep, yeah. in his 10 foot range. Uh, but that's only a 13 to hit. Yeah, I got 11 AC. <laughs> yeah. Um, for 10 points of bludgeoning damage and 8 points of piercing damage and you are grappled. So 18 plus? Yep. 18 total. 18 total. Okay. As it kind of swings out and wham! This thing kind of sinks into your into your shoulder and you feel this immediate gout of pain as it kind of, it kind of the, the ridged edges on it seem to have serration of some kind. It kind of sticks in and has, has you now held Damn there. At least my rope will, at least my rope will, will repair itself. And it's uh, gra- you are grappled and restrained. So restrained means you can't move. Your attacks are at disadvantage. Uh, and their and attacks, attacks are, are advantage. To you. Yeah. Uh, the other one at the other end. Uh, let's see, swiping out blind again because it doesn't see that you're there. Is it attacking me uh, or the little things attacking its feet? One tentacle is going at you. It's going to bite at the things at its feet and use the other tentacle on them. Uh, after you, oh, uh, that is a 23 hit. Hit, so it rolled really well. Um, no matter, I've only got 16 armor class, so. Uh, six, nine piercing damage, make a constitution saving throw. Uh, no, sorry, wait, uh, that was a tentacle. Actually, sorry, what was its total? 23? Hmm. No, I'm not going to do anything. Okay. Uh, sorry, I miscalculated the damage from working now. Four bludgeoning, uh, six piercing, and you are grappled as the thing kind of, again, lodges itself in the side of you. Yep. Uh, it will attempt to go after these tiny little bastards. Uh, that is a 18 to hit. Hit. Okay. I'm presuming they're immune to disease, so they take seven points of piercing damage. Doesn't actually say it, but it is immune to poison and psychic damage. This would be, this is called poisoned, but it's a disease, mm-hmm. so they have to yeah, be so it'd be, yeah, they'd be immune. Uh, and the other one. Sorry, how much damage? Uh, seven. Okay. Seven piercing. Uh, the other one, uh, 23 to hit. Mm-hmm. Okay, and takes 12 points, uh, 10, 10 bludgeoning, Blurk. 7 piercing as it hits one of the candlesticks, I guess, and smashes it against the wall. But that effectively means it's over its turn, Kuzaima. Okay, use my action again to it. get out of the grapple. Oh god, I got it without even thinking. <laughs> Sorry, uh, mm-hmm. I got the name right without even thinking. Yeah. It's a moment of pride. Um... A 20 anyways, but yeah, I got a 20 to get out of the gravel. No problem. You wriggle free of it once again. Uh, hmm. Well, I try to do the bonus action. Uh, hey, Clark, you can do the thing. No, oh, excellent. <laughs> be lovely. Are you calling out inspiration? Mm-hmm. So I guess that's what it is. Uh... As the little war yeah. starts beating, I it's guess. It's all as good as movement, so... It'll move out of its reach, so it gets an attack of opportunity if it wants. Yep. Uh, 13? Nope. Okay. As the tentacle swipes out toward you and misses. Okay. 
And then it's time for the tiny servants. Oh, yes. These guys have been murdering. Well, no. One hit once for six damage. Mm -hmm. Actually, oh, yeah, that's right. The second one pretty good. <laughs> so, yeah, okay. still the disadvantage because of the blur. Well, that's a 15 to hit. That hits. Uh, yeah, no, that's not uh, what is that? Seven blunt damage. Max damage. Nice. <laughs> Run away dice. Yeah. Scattered eye. I got it. But that's a miss anyway. Okay. Uh, <coughs> the other oh, yeah. ones. Just one moment, please. Uh, yes, because it is in the area. Uh, oops, that's good. Um, it's fighting against the the, the uh, vines and stuff that are around its feet. Um, oh yeah. Um, but it manages to kind of lift its three feet in succession to get free of it. The hmm. Yes, the two potion bottles are going to jump. Are going to climb up Zacchus and. Uh, they're going to work together to try to free him. <laughs> okay. They have a minus three strength, but they have advantage because one's helping the other one. Sure. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Uh, that's an eight. <laughs> <laughs> they tried their very best. Yeah, the thing is embedded so they heavily in the shoulder. Every time they kind of pull, it's like, ow, yep. ow, ow. They're not quite getting the thing out. All right. Anything left for your nope. turn? Okay. Uh, it is Radix's turn. Uh, let's see. What can she do? Uh, um, Radix starts to spin in place and then, then stops suddenly as three thorns launch out of her arm, firing at the one down there. The one that she's ensnared. Oh, yeah. Should we still have disadvantage to hit it because it's... It's held? not restrained because it managed to break itself free from that. Oh, okay. Uh, I rolled the strength that was after the fact, but it turns out it didn't affect anything. Okay. Uh, and that is two hits. Mm -hmm. So... Four, four, and seven. No, sorry. Four, and this, and seven. So 11 points as the thing gets uh, uh, thorns jammed into its side. Do, 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 do. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, as she spins around in place, but otherwise does nothing holding on to the entangle. It is Elzara's turn. I'm going to cast Guardian of Nature on myself. Okay. And become the tree. You're looking a lot like... Uh, terrace suddenly. Yeah. Uh, so 15 feet around me is difficult terrain specifically for my enemies. Okay. Um, 10 temporary hit points, con saves at advantage, and dexterity and advantage attack rolls at advantage as a bonus That's action. That's a lot. I'm going to have you remember that. Yep. <laughs> just, just so you know, that's why sure. I'm rolling nope. at advantage. That's, that's fantastic. Um, and yeah, so that is cast. And I'm going to make... Um, a long bow attack because that's the bonus action to cast. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, with a crit. Oh. Um, so which one are you attacking? Uh, I'm attacking the one that is holding Clark. Okay, it's also holding him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And looking the worst of the two. Um, uh, so that's two d eight plus three. Ooh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's four. 14 plus 3, so 17. Okay. Magical piercing. Indeed. Um, your arrows seem to carve into the side. One of them actually glances a little bit before it gets there, opening up a bigger wound as it starts to ooze uh, yeah. a, a dark um, red blood, I guess you would say. Red brown. And I'm going to. What's that allowed? It has how many tentacles? Three? Two. two two tentacles that two it's attacking with and face. one that has eyes on it. Yeah. Okay. Um uh, his hands are busy. I'll stay where I am. Okay. 
He, he's within my 15 feet, so. Fair enough. That's all that's. Uh, Zakis, you're up. Firebolt. Okay, you're at disadvantage. Yep. Uh, actually, well, 20 would have been nice, but the yeah. 12 plus 11 is still like. 12 plus 11, 11 is, yep, that's funny. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. 18 fire 18 all right uh, as you look at the thing and the once again finding just where that that edge where that previous uh, 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 shot from the bow had gone can aim as the as the wound kind of stretches open for a second once again it disappears this and the smoke rolling out the side it's looking tough it's looking rough right now I should say uh, that was your action yep and yeah, trying to break free is a bonus action. Would be a no. Action. Trying to break free is an action. I'm just gonna stand here because okay. I can't go anywhere else. This is fine. Top of the next round. A bonus action teleport. Yeah, no, but I want to see. Water flows in. Right to there. The part behind now, back here, is fully flooded. Right to the top of the tunnel. The water's flowing in. Those are half full. Um, it seems to be enjoying the water as it rush by, rushes by it. Uh, Clark. All right. Uh, strike the creature at disadvantage. All right. Uh, I will. I will use the thingy uh, to be inspired. You can roll it afterwards if you choose. He never no, does. No, fair enough. <laughs> we always remind him, but he never does. Uh, those Ooh. are terrible. Oh. Uh, that's why you can save it. That's fine. <laughs> uh, 13, not enough. No, unfortunately, you're still kind of off. As the water rushes over your feet, it's throwing you off even further. You're kind of a- anchored by one thing and pushed by the water. It becomes a bit of an awkward stretch. Second swing. Au natural. Uh, 16, that'll hit. 16 is a hit. All right. Um, three and six. And good. Uh, six, or sorry, eight with two of it being necrotic. Okay, as you slice into it, uh, nearly severing the tentacle that's holding you on, you can mm-hmm. see now it's bleeding profusely and starting to sway a little bit. Cool. Uh, cunning action. What are you going to do? Oh, wait, not cunning action. Action surge. <laughs> okay. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, disadvantage again. You got this. Uh, seven, f- 15. 15 is a hit. It'll hit. Five, six, seven, eight, three of it, uh, three of it being necrotic. Finish it! There is a sheen along the blade as it recognizes what is to come. How does this appear? I just think, I just think that the top half of the jaw just kind of goes black. <laughs> it's a squirt and the thing drops. All right. That's what I'm hoping for. Uh, as uh, you, you swing out, again, the blade kind of extends itself and even seems to extend even further. And you feel that rush, that surge, that energy that sense of purpose as the thing's uh, uh, throat is is slit from the inside and it kind of thrashes, pulls back both of its tentacles, releasing the two of you and crashes into the water, mm. loudly screaming as it dies. Cool. I have a question. Yep. You're no longer restrained. Excellent. And you still have your full movement. Yes. Uh... And I'm moving at 30 right now. Uh, Long strider. That's have, that would have been gone by now. It, I know it was an hour, right? a, It's yeah. an hour on concentration. Yep. No, it's okay. still there. Uh, however, the water is uh, difficult terrain. Cool. Uh, I believe, I mean, I don't know if it's where X for me, but if I use a, uh, not a bonus. Yeah, it's a bonus action. No. I need the bonus action. Is the action bonus. surge a bonus action? I don't think no. So. No. But bonus the thing action. I want to do would chew up my bonus action. So, in that case, we'll move. Uh, we'll, turn, we'll attempt to move. I guess it's and like a half. you can knock over that uh, creature. Yeah, uh, they just count as double. So, one, two, three, four, and then five. five. Yep. That's 30. Uh, you can no, move one 25. more. You can move uh, one more. 30. And from there, Clark would like to take out... Uh, 
the one of his hand axes. Okay. And because he downed a creature, mm -hmm. you get another action. So he's going to just whip it down the hallway. Well, you have a second attack from your action surge, don't you? Because you have two attacks normally yeah. when you attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah you haven't used yeah. the second attack. You still have that so, one. So you still have two attacks. Yeah. All right, two hatchets going <laughs> down the hallway. All right. I guess. I kind of imagine you underhand them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah this, this is this is the one that's blurry, yeah, so, so it's disadvantage. disadvantage for them. Well, okay, first one then. Uh, Actually, at that range, you'd be at disadvantage anyways, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Probably. Uh, okay, so seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten is a miss. Okay. As one of the axes can clung, 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 clung further down the uh, the tunnel. Uh, Oh. Um, 13. 13 is a miss, unfortunately. Yeah. You try. Okay. As, again, even though it fills up the entirety of the tunnel with the thrashing <laughs> tentacles, it's hard to get a bead on it, and clong, clong, clong goes another, okay. another axe. Uh, now it's its turn. Let's see. Um, it's hard to miss this thing that size, I would imagine. Kind of embarrassing, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't see. Uh, it will push forward another. Uh, oh. yeah. Let's have it. We get to do a thing. Push forward to, to there. Okay. Uh, it uh, technically the uh, servants are still stuck in the foliage. Uh, they didn't make their strength saves. They were on it, so I didn't have it. Didn't have the foliage. Effect. Okay. So they're basically moving with it. Okay. Um, but it will lash out at. Let's see who's right there. That is. Um, don't forget that if Prina is going to do anything, she has to do it on Radix's turn, and Radix is going to get the full full brunt of this because it can see Radix pretty clearly. Uh oh. Ooh, that's a interesting, and that's an interesting. Uh, what did it get? Because I can attempt to reduce that if I wish. Uh, the first one it got was an 8. And the second I'm one it got was a 14. Uh, uh, I will uh, cutting words that. Okay. What are the cutting words? How do you express that? Oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, yes. So that reduces it by No, it, it goes, stop. And it's uh, Am I the only one? no. If anything, it would be stop hammer time. Oh right, <laughs> drops it by eight. There you go. Uh, as it kind of noticing this voice from right in front of it, uh, kind of pulls short, very close to Radix's face, and she kind of gasps and goes wide-eyed, very close. Uh, that is its turn, Kazuma. Kazuma. <laughs> so close. Thinking about it too hard here. Uh. Okay, so it's pushed up to right behind me? Uh, effectively, yeah. Okay. Well, I am going to move away so that I'm not right next to it and getting constant disadvantage. Actually, it doesn't matter. I'm right next to it anyways. Okay. It does notice something happening. I knew from the sound it was there. Um, well, that Matt 20 would have been nice, mm -hmm. but that 11 does not hit, I don't think. Nope. As one of the was swooping up by you. Uh, Actually, technically, no, I didn't even bother that. Um, Kuzaima is going, uh, Ironbound is going to yell, Clark, where do I hit it to hurt it most? Uh, well, I'd probably answer on my turn, I guess. I'll allow uh, a quick answer, basically, uh, at the moment. Uh, jawline. Okay. Uh, inside. Well, he said jawline, so uh, that's where I'm going to hit it. Uh, I have advantage because I have allies closer, but I have disadvantage because it's all blurry, so I get a regular hit. Uh, I am going to try to add 10 damage to that by taking a minus 5. Hmm. No, I didn't. I was only at 50 to there. Never mind. I'll just take the base damage for now. That is, oh, I should have. Oh, well, that's a 27 to hit. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I get D4 plus 4 plus my D6 sneak attack. Mm. Well, that's 9 total. Okay. All right, 
as you lash out towards it, cutting up a bit. And then my tiny servants are continuing to try to pummel it in the nerds. <laughs> They're crawling up its just, legs, trying just, to beat any weak spots that they find. Old man, half nerds. Uh, oh, second, uh, nope. That was a twelve total, and that's a eight total. So, no, unfortunately, nope. they're they're finding only the tougher skin as they try to climb up higher. Yeah, well, it's the yeah the disadvantage means they no hit, uh, and the other two actually will come up and start punching it in the toes. Okay, they'll join in. Actually, one of them is going to help the other one hit. One tries to grab a toe and hold it steady, and the other one punches it. Yeah, right. So oh, they can uh, hit with a regular. Hey, that's a 19 to hit. That's a hit. It takes a sharp rock. And the Five blunt. Like a Lego. Yeah. Oh. You've discovered the Lego of the fantasy universe. <laughs> no, yep. those are called traps. Yeah. Oh, I'm all done. <laughs> all right. It is Radix's turn. She does not like being that close to it. Um. But she's determined. Uh, she runs up to it. And then you see her hands extend. And the, the thorns bend forward into dagger-like proportions. And she proceeds to punch Stand. away at it. Uh, that is a 13 to hit misses. Second strike. That is a 19 to hit. That hits. And the third one misses, unfortunately. She stabs into it for a little bit of damage. Not great. Uh, let's see, that was that. Uh, then uh, she begins to move strangely, almost as though she herself is made of vines. And twisting and moving, disengages and moves back. Nice. What does Prince do? Prince staying. Our I imagine Prin is kind of on her shoulder, cheering, and then, oh, that's too close! Okay, Prin is gonna... <laughs> How quickly her. can Prin disengage? Uh, it's an action. Okay. And she has no bonus actions whatsoever, does she? I don't think that they do, no. So well, she would, if she was on the shoulder of the dryad, wouldn't that have automatically pulled her back? Yeah, too? she's effectively riding the dryad at this point. Okay. Yeah. So because I was gonna say, if she like takes her tiny sword and like pokes one of the tentacle eyes, can she retreat without getting an, an attack of opportunity? She'd have to move into okay. it, so she'd have to move off of the shoulder. Uh, yeah. The the thing is about you know six feet long, oh. um, and fills the tunnel wide. Yeah. So it, there's quite a distance to get to the center part of it, where it's. And it's very protective of its eye, so they don't go right up front all the time. She can shoot arrows. Right, she will let loose a tiny arrow. All right. Uh, into the thing's eye. Okay. A disadvantage, I'm assuming? Yeah. Uh, it is a disadvantage still. No, oh, she got a two. Shoot. Hmm? Uh, the tiny uh, servants shouldn't have had disadvantage. They have, uh, they have blind sight. They don't use actual. I don't know sight. if blur is just strictly visual. No. I'll quickly check. Um, Not that it's going to matter much now, but uh, yeah, for the duration, any creature has disadvantage on attack rolls against you. Immune to if it doesn't rely on sight. Well, this is with blind sight. So yes, it specifically has that. So they are. It, it is. It is with the blind sight. They're immune to that. Okay. So yeah. That natural 20 should have hit. Oh, well. <laughs> the pretty misses. <laughs> okay. The toothpick goes flying. <laughs> uh, that is her turn. Uh, Elzera. Hello. Oh, so funny if the toothpick flies. Um, I am going to command my shield to jump so that okay. I don't have an AC of 13. That's probably a good logical thing to do. Um, and I am going to shoot a plus one arrow with advantage so it cancels out. So straight roll, plus one arrow, plus one longbow. No. No. <laughs> no. What was that? Was that a one? No. <laughs> plus one. It's gone to dice jail, so I'm pretty sure it's a one. <laughs> so roll another d20 for me, please. 17. Okay. The arrow kind of just bounces off somewhere, uh, probably never to be found again. Uh, and I don't like this creepy water, so I'm going to move 
to where Prina's mini is. Okay. Because Prina's on the there. Up. Yeah. Um, We're all in a nice compact space. <laughs> yeah. Um, but also, he's now in difficult terrain. Mm -hmm. For him. Only for him. Okay. Oh, as, the, as the ground kind of erupts underneath you. <laughs> um, hmm. What does it look like? It looks like vines growing out of the okay. ground on my feet. Good to know. Uh, it is Zacchaeus' turn. I'll step out of this icky water. Okay. That's ten. So it's a difficult terrain. Yeah. Okay. Firebolt. Is that a disadvantage? Yep. Okay. So there's a nineteen and a sixteen plus eleven. That's a hit. Oh, this is a lot less good. Uh, that's, a, that's only a seven <laughs> for three dice. Seven damage. Wait. Yeah, that's a seven. Okay. And the firebolt, you're having a hard time as it seems to keeping its mouth closed at the moment. Kind of bounces off the front teeth. You can see a little scarring along the teeth. Uh, top of the round. Uh, both markers on that. Do, do, do. There's the forefront, and this where it was. So now up to here is fully engulfed in water. As it moves, uh, it's right there. As the water washes over all of your feet. It's and kind of difficult to move through. And my knees, hips, and chest. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, actually, in your case. Uh, you're nearly actually, yeah. Uh, make a strength saving throw. I have lost you. He's near the front, though. Yes. Yes. Yeah, That's a is, three. That's a three. Different you're uh, knocked off your feet. No, you're just over you. Uh, Clark, you're up. Plus ten. Okay, gotcha. Clark is inspiring. Uh, I'm gonna move ahead. Uh, Lance at the ready, basically. Okay. Uh, wielding the Shadow Glaive. Uh, striking with disadvantage because of blurry things. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, 28. <laughs> 22? Once you pass 20, that's pretty good. Okay, hit. good. So, yes. All right. So that's the and first The Glaive one. once again goes... And this time, instead of going fully straight, it actually takes on the, the L shape, oh. carving into it. Let's see how much damage it does. All right. Cool. Let's try a little bit better than two. Nope. Adamant uh, about that too. Yeah. 13, 14, 15, two of it being necrotic. Nice. Uh, um, as it carves a, a decent section, once again opening up a wound in this thing is a sort of grayish brown, red, uh, blood like mud flows out of it. Yeah. Uh, another one. All right. Just because. Oh, bleh. Uh, pa fail. <laughs> <laughs> How bad? Uh, 12, maybe, I think. Oh, that's awfully close. Yeah, but. it's not. It manages to get one of its one of its tentacles in, and you kind of end up slamming against the side wall. Blech. That's your move in action. A bonus or anything else? Uh, yes, because I didn't declare a thing, which I meant to do at the top of my turn. Sorry. What was that thing? I'll do it later. Oh, okay. Uh, it is its turn. Uh, it has a nice juicy clarg right in its face. Please eat me. So it will try to chomp away at the clarg mm. and chomp chomp. Let's see. The rest of you within range. Uh, the dolls are. Yep, y'all are. All right. Mm. So uh, one Except tentacle for Zarkis, goes out towards uh, towards uh, Radix. The other one goes out towards Elzara. The first chumpy chump. Yay! Uh, yeah, that's a nine. Uh, you missed, thankfully. It missed. Yeah. There it missed towards Radix. An eight. <laughs> this is not going the right way. I can use a different die. This is die anyways. Wow. Uh, Maybe it's that is an 11 towards you. So yeah, I, I think because of the big chunk that you just got taken out of it and the little gnawing away at its feet, it's starting to get a little bit little bit shifty. Jostled. Yeah. One yeah. Makes or maybe the blurring awful. effect is also in front of its eye. Uh, it's yeah. blurring itself. It doesn't usually work that way. But <laughs> it is Gazima's turn. Yes. And now we know what we're actually supposed to be rolling. <laughs> That's true. Because I'm going to stand up. Are any and, of the, uh, uh, the things caught within the water? They nope. don't seem to be. Okay. They're all right on where it is. Uh, they're going to proceed to open up on it. Open up a candle of Wolfass. That's a 10 and a 9. That sucked. They roll worse than advantage. And a 10 and a 15. So <laughs> one of them hits. hits. For four blunt damage. All right. 
And uh, Kujima is going to take a minus five to do plus ten and uh, uh, launch one at its jaw again. Okay. Uh, Launching the. Uh, are you throwing something? Are you me or, or? No. A. Oh, dart. Okay. Yep. Um. It's not going to use any, anything special. Are you right next Actually, to Actually, all I've got is special ones. Nope. I'm right there. I am oh, ten right. feet away. I keep mixing up the other strange white figurine. Uh, and since I have allies there, and it's all shady, it's just a regular shot. Actually. Yep. Mm. No, I won't take the minus ten, or minus five, because... Uh, Oh, what the heck. I'll take the minus five. Right. If I hit, it'll be cool. Nope, I don't. What was the roll? I rolled a six. I get an 11 total. Okay. Yeah, as unfortunate as the dart kind of... It's it's like, it's perfect. It's going to hit. It's going to hit, and then it moves this tentacle right on by. Uh, that was your action. Your oh, move, I forget or... that those are actually poisoned darts that I'm using, but I'm pretty sure it's immune to poison. Um, let's see. See, uh, bonus action. I am going to healing word, uh, Clark. Uh, I use a three. Heal ten points. Oh, thank you. Nice. Whee. All right. Now it is Radix's turn. Hmm. Radix steps forward. Oh, and actually, sorry, I will move forward one, just so I'm not in the water. Okay. Uh, yeah, you would have used half your movement to step up, stand up anyway. So presumably you did that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've got like 35 feet. So. Radix steps forward and whoosh, dives into the vines that have been surrounding the ground. And whoosh, you see her pop up behind the thing. Yeah. Glad to be a sir. Because that's where she put the vines before, and they're still there. Uh, that nat one does not help. But uh, one of them still hits as she proceeds to stab at it. Oh, never mind. Oh, even with disadvantage, she managed to hit. Nice. Because I forgot about that. Uh, so she stabs at the. And does she. Nope. Okay. That is that. And then she will use a bonus action. To back up 15 feet. Okay. Uh, Elzara, you're up. Um, I'm going to shoot just with a regular arrow, but still plus one bow. Um, that is a 21. 21 hits. For six. Magical piercing. Magical piercing. That sounds painful and magical. Um. The glowing belly ring. It's still in my way. <coughs> that little white thing that's on the creature, right? Yes, essentially. They're scaling it. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, there's four. Li there's two potions and a couple of candles that are um, crawling all I'm going to guess Prina wasn't taken with her. No. She wouldn't have been able to take her with her. Uh, no, she can't take him. So Prina's kind of like, hey, uh, where'd uh, my ride go? I'm going to grab Prina and take a step forward. Okay. <laughs> Prina's like, we're moving. Well, we're well, so that I'm in the square. Okay, the yeah, water. there's one square. Yeah, in the yeah. water. Yeah. Prina's like, what? We're moving closer. Move the pencil. <laughs> there we go. All right. The pencil's the water line. Yeah. yeah. But we can, like, draw shopping. Um, it keeps it differentiated. The, uh, the, 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 that was your turn? Mm -hmm. That okay. was Zach, my action and... Action to move. Firebolt. No bonus this time? Just quick. No. Okay. Firebolt. So 10 plus 11. 21. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's a hit. 15 damage. Oof. It's looking very, very hurt. As this time it kind of edges into that large cut that, that Clark made at its shoulder. It's time four, burning the flesh on the inside. Six. six. That's the end of your movement. Yes. But I'm out of um, the water. <laughs> no, because. It can't be there because I'm, uh, someone's already there. In that you can't stop there. 
Yeah, you'll have to be one back from it. Which means you're about to get swamped by water. But you can breathe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. For the next 24 hours. Wait, so if I'm going to get swamped by water, I'll, I'll just stay like one further away so I can't hit me. Or can't can hit... Yeah, I can. Okay. You're probably... So you have a range of 10 on those tentacles. Okay. All right. Okay. Beginning of the turn. Once again, the water surges forward. To where that one was. And there's another 20 forward. feet forward. Because uh, I'm not, once again, make a uh, strength check or strength saving. Aha! 16. 16. You manage this time to brace yourself just as the water kind of swamps over you. Um, the water engulfs Zacchaeus. Make a constitution saving throw. Well, that's a two, plus so four total. You're currently poisoned as yeah. the water, while you can breathe, does have something else in it. You can feel mm. almost actively wriggling into your Ew. lungs. Currently, you are poisoned. Well, we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, Clark, you're up. Then the, the charge, slay right the creature. Feet. Right. That's the intent. All right, then. Uh, boo. Uh, okay, so uh, 23? Yep, I'm pretty sure that's it. Cool. That's even with disadvantage. Yay. Uh, 7, 9, 8 with uh, 1 necrotic in there. Okay. With the uppercut, you kind of pull back and catch a little bit, then pull inward towards you. There's now a gash underneath its chin. Oh, add three more necrotic. Sorry. Ooh. As the wound gets visibly worse as Yay. you stare at it. A little bit of hissing and bubbling around the Final wound. Final swing, maybe? Question mark? Yeah. Uh, I'll do 15 with my bonus. Uh, okay. Eighteen with seven of it being necrotic. <laughs> so, what does this look like? Oh, another one. Uh, top half falls over. The whole thing slumps. It's okay. a bit of a splash. Uh, is this time it kind of screams back in pain as you open up this gash underneath its chin, and then kind of just tug as its bottom is its bottom jug jar jar jarb <laughs> bottom jaw just dislodges and kind of flops downward, and the the top half of it's kind of screams. It falls over. Dead. Right. Okay. Uh, each of you make a perception check. You're at disadvantage because you're in ensconced in water. Okay, well, that's a one. <laughs> well, that's fitting, actually. 19 over here. 19. 16. 16. 24. 24. Nice. Uh, Clark, as you're staring through the creature and looking back, you can see uh, Radix is there ready to fight. Uh, and you see the creature kind of fall as well. Uh, and Radix seems unaware of the fact that there is something standing behind her. Oh no. About 20 feet away. The both of you recognize such a thing. Um, it has gray skin, stands almost seven feet tall, seems to hover slightly above the floor. Large tentacles sprout uh -oh. from its chin where a mouth would be. And then it vanishes. And that's where we'll end tonight. Can I get out of the water first? As presumably you, you, around, rush, you rush forward to get out of the water. The lights go red and there's... <laughs> it's true. As it's easy enough to keep ahead of the water yeah. now as it's, as it's moving, but all of you end up having to run a little bit until the tunnel slights, slightly rises upward and you emerge from the edge of the tunnel just as you watch the tunnel fill up with water. Well, there's our exit. Am I still poisoned? Like, how long does it last? Uh, make a constitution saving throw. I'm not going to use this side. This, this side again. There was a 16, Ooh. 18 total. Um, you are still. Actually, no, you would. Uh, when do you get to roll again? You don't get to roll again. So, yes, you can, I would. Feel, you can feel the, the pain and the searing burn on you. Um, strangely enough, your stomach feels like it's churning. Yeah, and you feel ill. Uh, write down somewhere just on your notes for today, a note for next time. You know, probably have to do this next time. You are diseased. 
And that's where we're going to call it for tonight. Uh, I want to thank everybody for playing. Thank you. Sorry. No, that was loud. That was really loud. <laughs> what was that? That was... Because magnets. That was, that was magnets? Mm -hmm. That they work. Well, magnets apparently not only work, they work very, very well. <laughs> they do. Uh, I want really to thank do. everybody who's been watching. Uh, we got a couple people in the chat tonight. Uh, let's see. The Computer King stopped in very near the beginning. I hope you stayed for the whole thing. The Obrama... Uh, sorry. The Obromo Choco... Or Theo Bromo Choco, or wherever you want to interpret that. Welcome to uh, you to stopping in. Uh, this video will go up later on as on as YouTube experience. Uh, so, if people want to uh, say hello in other ways, uh, Marie, how should they do such a thing? We have a YouTube page, or a YouTube page, obviously. A Facebook page is what I meant to say. Uh, Facebook on, on Facebook, it is Legend of the Drowned Isles. There is also a group that we can have some chats in. If you're you're in that group, you would have seen a close-up picture of the ring last week when I posted it. Mm -hmm. um, so we put some some fun stuff in there. Uh, so that is Watchers of the Drowned Isles, which you can find through the Facebook page. And if people like videos, what should they do? Oh, uh, if you're seeing this on YouTube, congratulations, you made it. You're here. Please like and subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and share this video with any friends you think might uh, enjoy it. And we will be streaming again on Twitch next Sunday, 4 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time. Uh, I believe that's 3 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, 11 Daylight or, time. Or noon on Sunday if you're in the Pacific Time, or it's, something like that. It's Daylight Time now. Atlantic Daylight Time? Or whatever it ADT? is. ADT? Something, something. Time in the Maritimes, because there's no time like that. Whatever time for is... We'll see you on the internet. Week. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. It's shadow time. There is no time. Have a great week, folks. We'll see you again Bye -bye. next week.